Welcome to episode 31 of the current backlog. The date is September 10th. I'm your host, KCP, along with my good friend and co-host, Cody G. Finally back together in person. Cody, how are you? I'm good, man. Hopefully you get the echo in <laughs> fixed. We'll find out when we upload it. <laughs> my line says it was picking up on you yelling, but it also said it just picked up on you laughing just now. Oh, I was going to say I only yell like that once, but if it's picking up on the laugh, then it's probably still going to do it. Yeah, that's good where the echoings come from, but I'm not allowed to touch the gains. So <laughs> who knows? Who knows, Ryan? No, you can touch it. I told you I don't care. <laughs> no, yeah. And it's all your gear. Um, so what have you been up to? It? It's been a while. It's been a while. Uh, just celebrating my birthday. I turned 27, 27 club. That's right. September 10th, like I said. So it's your birthday. Yep. Yes, sir. Yep. And tomorrow's Renee's birthday. Actually... Been her birthday for one hour. Yeah, I guess we're that late now. Yeah, we're not. It's not even. Uh, um, we're not the same age anymore. For one day, we're the same age. Yeah. Oh man. So. Let me uh, text her happy birthday. She's sleeping, so it doesn't matter. There you go. Boom. Set. Okay. Yeah. So uh, besides that, that's about it. I I think last podcast was talking about me digging up my yard, so we. We did that with a jackhammer and chopped up some concrete and found this pipe that was full of roots, super full of roots, pulled the roots out, fixed it. Once again, though, they're a lot older than me. The two guys helped me, yeah. Renee's dad and her, her friends. I felt terrible. <laughs> all of Renee's family was like, dude, dude, next time call me, he's got, he just got both his hips replaced. <laughs> I tried to tell them a hundred times. Like, it was one of those moments where, like, dude, give me the, like, I'm taking troubles away from them. Like, stop it. But they, they want to do the work. They, they said they enjoyed it and they want to do the work. And it's one of those moments where you're like, hey, this is not working. And then they come over with a bunch of tools. And they look at it. And, like, I turn around and look back and they're already digging. And there's, like, holes in my yard. I'm like, okay. And it's this awkward moment where you can't stop a grown man. I, did, I was taking troubles out of their hands. But if I was like, dude, just next time, just give me a call. They get they, a lot of joint issues and they're taking a lot of pills I'm like don't make me feel like the asshole here i tried to make them stop okay and they didn't want to stop because i don't know they told me they enjoyed it so i was like okay if you guys enjoy this i'm not gonna stand away in, in front of them i felt terrible but they saved us a lot of money there you go. like i put their bodies at risk for they saved me probably three grand I mean, you're a real, real winner there, so that's all that matters. Yeah, exactly. Fuck their, fuck their hips. I mean, you just got new hips. Don't you want to put some miles on them? Yeah, Get exactly. Some use out of them. Yeah. So that's about it. It's been draining away from the foundation. It's a good feeling. The dumb shit you learn. When you <laughs> own a, I can't wait for you to own a house, Casey. You're gonna learn so many dumb things. Even like, uh, I used to hate this old house with Bob Vila. My parents would be like, "Oh, this is so interesting. Hold on." And uh, there's a, you showed me was it. Vizio TV, whatever they have that free. Oh, yeah, Vizio. They have uh, just this old house constantly. I'm always watching dumb shit on there. Like, oh, my God, that's how they did that? Hey, hon, hon, what do you think about doing this with our garden? Uh, our little garden bed out front. What do you think about that? You like this edging? Like, shoot me. I catch myself. I'm like, oh, my God, that's stupid. Don't say that. <laughs> hon, what do you think about putting gravel back there next next, uh, next fall? What do you think about getting some gravel? <laughs> no, don't do that. What do you think about... Uh, I think I'll get a new lawnmower, babe. What do you think? Like, shoot me in the head. <laughs> I don't even like... I catch myself like, oh, oh, don't do that. Don't don't be that person. But you've clearly done it, though. Yeah, oh, yeah. Real bad. <laughs> Especially because now I'm starting to... Uh, my next-door neighbor, I'm starting to judge him. Like, <laughs> dude, you need to get an edger over there. Do you even have an edger? <laughs> You're going to look like a real idiot the next windstorm that comes through with those tree branches. Are you going to deal with those? Better not be in my yard. You mentioned Ryan earlier. You're going to become the next Ryan. I think so. Before you know it. You know, Ryan had the same problem with this pipe. <laughs> but that was not cutting up concrete, and they get quoted him like $1,500. So, Ryan, I'm feeling kind of confident enough, buddy. If you want to, uh, maybe we could find some geriatric people for you as well. We could all go out there and start digging up. I think Ryan is one of those. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we could start digging up your stuff if you want, bud. <laughs> Yeah, that's all I've been doing. What have you been doing? Um, well, as I told you, I'm off work for 12 days, I think nine now. 
But um, because I went out of state to Kentucky, me and Danielle did to celebrate our anniversary. And um, work required us to be out for two weeks, even though we were in a secluded cabin. And Kentucky has half the amount of cases Ohio does and never had more in a daily, daily day I'd ever go, I said it again, than Ohio. But um, you, I see why you're smiling now. What? It smells. You do something? No, I make oh. a flag now. Um, I was smiling just because this little halo guy. <laughs> a halo guy. That was like a grandma. Um, Master Chief holding your phone. But I'm actually not complaining about it. We, uh, I got a good amount of money saved up. Thinking about moving in a bigger place. <laughs> and I, as soon as I said that, I thought of that. Um, but no, I got a good amount of money saved up. And it gives me two weeks off to play a lot of games, watch movies clean up get stuff organized which i haven't really done any of that for much play games and watch stuff so i've done the non-productive stuff but good for a podcast it gives me plenty to talk about so i'll get into that when uh we get to different things but in kentucky went to uh red river gorge which is a national park there and it's actually only four hours from us so it's super easy to get to so the one with caves um, you're probably thinking of Mammoth Caves. Yeah. Yeah, I want to go there. It's awesome. There is some caves here. Like, one of the things we did was uh, kayaking inside of a cave. Oh, shit. It was super cool, and uh, there was fishes swimming through and everything, and then there's LED oh. lights on the bottom of our boats, ah. our kayaks, so you could see underneath. See, like so, I say, there were LED lights in a cave. I'm like, oh, they're ruining the natural beauty. But then the fact they're on the kayaks is yeah. so nice. No, yeah. I love kayaking, dude. Yeah, oh, do you? I fucking get way too excited about kayaking. We should go. I, I've been wanting to buy some. Uh, Costco, I guess, is a good place to. There's a. Also, if you don't want to commit to that, I don't know if you heard of Trapper John's. No. It's like 40 minutes from us, and you rent it for. I don't remember. It's been a long time since I've been there, but like $10 for two hours, and they have a. It goes down um, Allen Creek. That's so, so cheap. It's a, yeah, it's a big area of water to do it. It's super nice. Um, but besides that, we just did a lot of the normal cabin wood stuff. We did. Uh, we had a, it was a really nice cabin. There's a hot tub, a fireplace, um, like an outdoor fireplace. So romantic. So, I hate you. No, so, it's huge. It's nice. No, it was perfect, though, because uh, we had a hot tub, and then we would make s'mores and have a fire like every night. The weather was almost perfect for it. Well, for the most part, it was uh, almost like Florida weather, where it was super nice, and then it was just fucking down for. But uh, we got all pretty lucky, so every time it was raining, we were inside the cabin, which... Actually made it kind of cool and relaxing here in all the rain outside. Um, and we also, when I get into my movies, we watch some that were fitting for that. So I can talk about that. But um, we just did a lot of stuff around there, like uh, something called the, Nat- the Natural Bridge. It's uh, this giant, probably like 400 feet up. And it's um, just this giant rock structure, but it became a bridge and you walked across it. And it's like 400 feet in the air. Virginia then, had one of those. Yeah, when I looked it up, it actually, the, it auto-filled to Virginia or Kentucky, and I was like, huh. But yeah, it looked kind of similar. I haven't been to one in Virginia, but just from that, it looked similar. When I lived in Virginia, that was like the, just a constant, either that or D.C. was your field trips. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I haven't, I mean, I've done hikes, but I haven't really seen anything like this, and then if you keep hiking, there's a, a sky lift like we did when we were in uh, Tennessee, so we did that, and um well, actually, we were going to do that to, on the way down, so we had to hike. But then we realized our car wasn't parked there, so we were like, well, we'll do it another day. And um, it was this farther down the path from the natural bridge was this overlook to see the natural bridge, because when you're going across, you can't really tell what it is. But then you can walk farther and see, like, a whole overlook of it. And we are like, man, well, should I come back here, and we'll use a sky lift, and we'll bring a, a picnic and be all queued up here. And Jesus, um dude. Then we, uh, you're setting the bar way too high. <laughs> Thank God Renee doesn't listen to this podcast. <laughs> I told her that you guys went to Kentucky and got a cabin. That's all I said. She's like, so romantic. <laughs> God, no, don't. You know, it is fun and really relaxing, and uh, I'd recommend it. It's super cheap, I mean, relative to doing that kind of stuff. And like I said, it took like four hours to get there. It's the easiest drive in the world. And, um, the cabin was super nice, and there's nothing around it. Like we couldn't hear anything, 
so super nice. But uh, then the next day when we went to use the sky lift, it was like the perfect day for it. It wasn't too hot, too cold, wasn't raining. And then right as we were getting to the trail to end, the end point, it started sprinkling. Like, oh, damn it. And like, oh, well, we're here now. And then we pulled out all of our food and drinks that we brought. And it started raining harder. I'm like, oh, this kind of sucks. Uh, oh, the Cheez-Its are kind of wet now. We're just eating like soggy Cheez-Its. Okay. And then it just fucking started downpouring where you couldn't even see anything. Oh, my God. And uh, the path that we walked there to get there, there was just all just normal ground. And on the way back, there was like an inch of water everywhere. It filled up Holy that fast. Shit. And uh, so that got ruined pretty fast. But uh, it was still a funny experience and uh, still entertaining. Yeah. And if it... It was one of those things that if it went well, it would have been cool, but we probably would have forgot it in a couple of weeks. The fact that that happened makes us a dumb story that we actually probably remember yeah. longer than if it went the way we planned. It's kind of funny. Our generation does not look at the weather or the news. <laughs> we just do shit. Well, um, the weird thing is the weather, they're predicting the entire time we'd be there, it'd be um, like not just rain, but storms the entire time. Like I said, for the most part, it was sunny. So we even watched it, but every time we watched it, it was just dead wrong. So I don't really watch the weather, but that's the reason, because every time I try and trust it, it's fucking wrong. I was telling Danielle, I don't know how the fuck meteorologists get so much money. Everybody's like, well, it's a hard job. They can't predict it right all the time. I, like, I know, but they're getting it wrong majority of the fucking time. So <laughs> who's paying these people, and what are they doing? Yeah, it's a, like you said, it's useless, but I work with a bunch of like retired guys. They're already retired, and they're working this job now. And they love the weather. <laughs> that is their fucking go-to. I mean, as I get into work, before I get to work, I'm like, I gotta look at the weather so I can carry on a conversation with these guys. I mean, that's why Carrot's always posting the weather every two minutes on <laughs> Facebook. Maybe he uh, <laughs> fell into that trap. So I was wondering why he was so obsessed with it. I tell you, man, uh, you guys see that big storm coming tomorrow, coming through Kentucky. And you're like, oh, shit, yeah, dude, I definitely saw that. But I've never, I don't look at the weather. Yeah. They love some weather, man. And... That's what I mind. Well, that's the first thing that they said to me. Didn't you check the weather? Like you said, it's never accurate. Yeah. Oh, they love some radar, too. Oh. We have all these screens. We're supposed to be watching shit. Some will designate, like, a little area for just the radar. <laughs> what the fuck? You're inside. <laughs> that's great. And then they'll walk around with, like, your stereotypical local news playing. And just, like, in their, like I'll listen to podcasts, and they're, like, listening to uh, <laughs> Christina on WP56. They know all their names, too. Uh -huh. Oh, is it that Christina or whatever her name? I don't know what her fucking yeah. name is. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's funny. And then, like, more will come in. They had no connection with the ones that had already mentioned this stuff. And then they'll mention it, too. Like, what the? You guys all on the same program? That's like when we all used to work to together about video games. Every time <laughs> one of us walked in, it was just somebody else joined in on that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did you guys see the, the shooting down at the West End? <laughs> stuff like that. Like, no. <laughs> I don't know. They just spend too much time on the news. There's always some stupid little stories in there they think are cute. Like, like I don't know. You know the news always put a little cute story uh -huh. in there. Yeah. Um, they don't focus like... on that, though. They always focus on, did you hear about the six people that died in a fiery crash? Yeah, I was going to say, that's... I feel like the news kind of does that to... I mean, the news kind of makes people like that, though. Uh, uh, ten people horribly murdered. And, uh, oh, look at this silly bunny riding a scooter. Yeah. And then it's like... <laughs> Oh, these people died in a fire. And wait, we're just throwing that like a buffer so we're supposed to forget about these horrible things? Exactly. Um, but besides that, the only other thing we did, we spent a lot of time in the cabin because that was kind of the point of it to just not spend a lot of money and spend time relaxing. And it, had, it actually had Wi Fi and well, we had a cellular data the whole time, which is kind of crazy. Thank you for saying that. Because Renee got real sassy after that. Well, you probably couldn't survive without internet and your cell phones. <laughs> so thank you. No problem. Um, I won't lie. I'm not trying to do that guy. Like, oh, I don't like technology. We mostly brought it to uh, use the Xbox for the Blu-ray player. And then if she went to bed, I was going to play games or if we wanted to play games together. My phone, I actually didn't really care about either way. I was like, I if the Wi-Fi doesn't work here and we don't have a connection, I don't know what the hell we would do if something actually happened, like an emergency so I wanted cellular data for if something were to happen. Also, I should have backed, I'll back up here. I should have told you about this place before we got there. If if you're somebody that's skeptical, you probably would have not gone. So I found this place, it was called River Red River Gorge Cabin Company, which just sounds generic, but 
it was a uh, I reserved it and then he sent me an email of the directions how to get there and oh, no. there was eight steps and he said that you could use Google Maps but for the last eight steps ignore Google Maps because it won't take you where you're supposed to go well, this sounds like you're a reggae murderer. No, just trust us. you got to follow these directions. And then um, I noticed on step seven, it said that uh, stop at the tool shed if you want to access the Wi-Fi. And I was like, wait, what the fuck? And when I reserved it, I made sure there was Wi-Fi because I knew she would want it. And like I said, for games and everything. And so I messaged him back. And I was like, so is there not Wi-Fi at the cabin? Because I'm confused about the step seven with the shed. And he's like, no, there... Well, it's not Wi-Fi at your cabin. It's at the tool shed. But depending on where you are in the cabin, you should be able to reach it. So, like, uh, our phones didn't actually connect to Wi-Fi. It um, wasn't a strong enough connection. But like I said, surprisingly, cellular data was more than good, so that didn't matter at all. But the Xbox, for some reason, connected just fine and was actually running Netflix and everything perfectly fine. I don't know if the antenna on it's just stronger, maybe, or something. Yeah, maybe. Because that's the only thing I could think of, and that was the main thing I wanted. Like I said, the data was just as far as if there's an emergency but uh i was like that sounds real iffy and then um the step eight was right after you pass the cemetery you'll find your cabin oh there's no fucking way (laughs) and and, uh last eight get in the hole yeah step nine uh step nine was you'll um leave the paved road and head on to gravel Oh, this is, we're going to get fucking murdered. And then it said that uh, the key will be waiting for you inside and the cabin will be unlocked. And I was so, it could just be somebody saw they left there. And, All right, let's go wait for the next people to come in. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, ignore the naked man in the closet. I wasn't, I thought it was all kind of weird, but I wasn't actually worried. I was kind of just playing it up. Like uh, I called my mom and said, uh, if we don't make it back and I was being real dramatic about it. And she said, I am already terrified. You know, I am so worried. How could you do that? <laughs> and I was like, no, can I do that because I'm not worried at all. I just think it sounds funny. And if this was like a horror movie, these are the exact directions of how people get killed. But I'm not actually worried about it. You'd be like, you idiot. You shouldn't have done that. Uh-huh. Um, but it was all good. And um, the only other thing we really did there was, you're going to make a joke, and I made it a thousand times, but I was going to say it. it was a, a tunnel called Not a Tunnel. So, um, not a tunnel, yeah, it's N A D A, but yeah, it sounds like not a tunnel. So, oh, I great. kept making that lame joke a thousand times, so I thought you'd make it too. Um, but it's a really cool tunnel that it's a two lane road, but the tunnel part is only one lane, and it's so confined that if you go like an inch to the left or right with your car, you're just gonna smack into this wall that is a Holy canyon, shit. and uh. It was so fucking cool, though, so you literally had to, before you go in there, you had to make sure you don't see headlights. Otherwise, you're just going to be stuck in there at the car. And like I said, it it might not be an inch, but you, you're you literally like wall-to-wall with this thing, so reversing would probably be a nightmare if you had to get stuck in there. But um, I think it's like 800 feet long, which doesn't sound very long, but when you're going in a tunnel like that and you're moving really slow because you don't want to hit the wall, it lasts a long time. And I... Even in the daylight, I turned off my headlights to see it for a second. It was just fucking pitch black in there. Damn. And it was so cool. Um, I don't know if you saw, Daniel had a video of it. She did a ridiculous Star Wars theme song when we were going down the tunnel. I don't think I saw that. It fit really well. I can show you. So you get an idea of what I'm talking about. It was really cool, though. Yeah. Um, and then random stuff I did on the way or a lot of eating, because you know that's how I am. I uh, stopped at a Casey General store. As you saw, I got some more Casey Chow. And I finally got a full pizza there. And it was fucking amazing. Really? Yeah, it was only uh, 8 bucks for a large pizza. Damn. And uh, you can get custom made, like the white sauce and everything. Like they actually have that on their app. So it was all, it was fucking perfect. And we also went to Bojangles. Uh, mm-hmm. We were just talking about Bojangles today. Oh, really? Yeah, Renee was asking me about uh, fast food chicken places because she's never gone to any of them. Oh I God. told you she'd never even yeah. gone to KFC, Popeyes, any of them. And I said Popeyes is similar to like Bojangles. I was like, wait, you have no frame of reference. <laughs> and I was like, uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's like it's a spicier KFC. But uh, yeah, Bojangles I think has. I was thinking today, which one had better biscuits, Popeyes or Bojangles? I think I settled on Bojangles. 
I had to have them again. I think I actually like the biscuits more at Popeye's. I'm not yeah. sure about that, but I like the chicken more at Bojangles, which is obviously more important. I'm just it's kind of criminal. We don't have Bojangles here. Bojangles has really good breakfast too. Do they? Mm-hmm. Never had that. That was a, usually that was a <coughs> the first job for a lot of my friends. Oh <laughs> God! Bojangles. I don't think I'd want to work there. <laughs> um, they also had an exclusive Mountain Dew there. I knew you'd be jealous. I know you love trying Mountain Dews. Oh yeah. Um, I thought it was okay, Danielle. I actually liked it a lot. It kind of tastes like a, like a mangoey pineapple citrus. I know that kind of conflicts, but it was like a mixture of that. It wasn't bad. It was just aren't really my flavor. So I'm like, eh, that's not bad. But she loved it, so you'd probably be all about that. And then we also, on the way there, I saw that we could pass Papa Murphy's, and not add much time to take and bake pizza place. And when I told you my favorite, did you ever try it here? I don't think so. We need to get it sometime. It's it's my favorite take and bake. So on the way down, I was like, let's do it. And um, we got four take and bake pizzas <laughs> and um, made them in the cabin. And on the way back, I got three more to bring home. That's great. And um, then we also went to cookout when we were down there. Oh. Yeah, that was good stuff. Love cookout. We went, stopped in uh, Lexington, Kentucky to get it. But uh, haven't had cookout since we went, so that was good. And then we also went to CC's, which is the first time I've been there since all, all this. Good stuff. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm not trying to make you jealous. I'm just excited. Um, it was weird, though. I get it, but uh, with everything going on, CC's is a different place, and I knew it would be. I was just oh, curious how they would do it. Fuck, I didn't think about that. I feel like they do the best they can, but yeah, it kind of ruins the, the whole point. I just like going up and being a pig and just kind of being disgusting. So. They have the employees waiting up there the entire time. When you walk up, they just get everything for you. Uh, what do you want? Do you want uh, noodles? And then they scoop it for you. Uh, do you want a uh, mac and cheese pizza? And you grab it and put it on your plate. And then hand it to you that way. You know, everybody's all touching the same thing and all that. So I feel like they do the best they can with it. But it does kind of suck. Especially because I'm sure if you told them exactly what you wanted, you could do it. But um I just always was like, yeah, I want some noodles and was in particular. So they just give me like the same size noodle every time. And I just kept going up. I'm sure I probably could have been like, give me, give me a full plate or whatever. I think they still do it. Because I don't want to cause any more issues than these people probably deal with the worst fucking shit every day. Right. <laughs> so that means they're probably their payroll went up too. Um, I feel like there's more people working. It felt the same amount because they just. Um, there's people always moving around there, but I feel like they kind of kind of just be stationed there, and they're doing because uh, there's a couple people making pizzas, and then like the three people doing the line or whatever. I feel like there's usually about that many. Yeah, I feel like a good starter at CC's is a plate of pasta. Yeah, oh, that's <laughs> one of my favorite things. Even over the pizza, I actually like the pasta is my favorite thing there. That's funny. Yeah, I uh, I like the pizza, especially the mac and cheese pizza, but the pasta I eat way more of. <laughs> the mac and cheese pizza, man, <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah. So man. I'm very jealous. That's that's a lot of good <laughs> Um this I actually tried here, but I tried I've had three more times since then and I had doing in uh, Kentucky just to be generic. Have you tried KFC's new fries? No. They've been advertising them and I was like, What the fuck? That seems weird, but so I tried them and as you can tell I probably liked them since I've gotten them like four times already. <laughs> but they're really good. They're one of those things that you definitely have to get fresh. And luckily, and surprisingly, three of the times I've gotten, they've been fresh because you know how KFC can be. Oh, yeah. And they, these are one of those fries that would definitely depend real real strong on the quality of it. Like McDonald's, if it's fresh, it's amazing. If it's not fresh, you're like, that's ah, not that bad. But there's some fries that literally just get ruined by it. Yeah, um, I was, uh, Renee tried to microwave Popeye's french fries. Oh, so like, what are you doing for us? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is definitely one of those to an extreme point. Like I said, even I feel like there's a lot where they're definitely obviously better fresh, but they're perfectly fine if they're not fresh. But these, the best way to compare them is like Taco Bell's nacho fries. They have like that seasoning, but then they have like the texture and the saltiness of uh, Burger King fries. So, oh, damn, that's a good combo. Yeah, it's really good. And uh, their size, they're fucking ridiculous. They call it an individual, and it's like a probably like that big. And then their large I got today, it was fucking, I have a picture I can show you later, it was like that big, although this is so dumb. You were going to fries at Five Guys? 
Yeah, I don't really like Five Guys, but yeah, I know how ridiculous they are. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll have to try them. Yeah, let me know what you think. Then, besides that, the only thing I did was be depressed because our pool got shut down. I was like, oh, man, I got 12 days off. It's hot. And I went over and it's closed for the season. Oh, what? Yeah, I thought it was early. I was like, what the fuck? Especially with this hot weather we got right now. But that's all for Real me. day, I'm guessing? Probably. That's what Danielle was saying. It's usually a pool thing. Yeah. Labor, I just, to, labor to Memorial Day, I think. Yeah. Or Memorial Day to Labor. Was it Memorial? Yeah, Memorial Day to Labor. Yeah, Labor Day. Um, I feel like I didn't even process that even being a point to being closed soon, though. Probably just because of how I fucked up everything is right now. I had no... Right. I was like, wait, what the fuck? Why did it be closed? I just didn't process that be a closing thing. I know it does close every year, but... Yeah, it's, it's... weird to think it's September. <laughs> what the fuck? We're almost halfway through September. Yeah. Um... I think that's all besides, like I said, the stuff that I'll get into later with movies and games and whatnot, because I've been doing a lot more of that with my time off. But um, do you have any corrections, questions, or feedback? No, just the echoing. I didn't yeah. notice anything besides the echoing. Okay, I got a few notes from watching your episode. Nothing too Oh, bad. that's right. I've been waiting for yeah. this. I forgot all about this. So, and I think all of these you said you think or like you weren't like taking a strong stance. So I don't know if you're really wrong, but... You said, if you weren't mistaken, that Splinter Cell Conviction was the last Splinter Cell game in 2010, and it was actually Blacklist in 2013. Okay. And I, that's the one that had the collector's edition? I think so. I didn't look. I should have looked that up. I didn't think about it, because you said that, and I was like, shit, that might be right, but I feel like there's another one, so I was questioning part of why I looked that up. Um, I actually, I've heard good things about both those, but I haven't played either of them. Yeah, you know, I'm excited. I want to play through the whole that whole series. Yeah. To see if I really like it. Um, then one of the other things was, I feel like you've done this a thousand times, and I feel like um, playing the DLC is probably what's doing it for you. You're like, I think the enemies in Halo 2, Halo Wars 2 are called the Stranded, and they're the Banished. Banished. But they yeah. even kept saying how they were stranded, so that was, that's probably going to mess with them ten times more now. <laughs> yeah, Banished, not Stranded. And they're very similar, obviously, because... If you're banished, you're probably stranded, so... Yeah, oh, man. And then, one other, I guess I could be wrong, but um, you're talking about how crazy it is with Nintendo, with their uh, Nintendo Direct, about how they're going to update the um, SNES Classic, like the mini one. Yeah. I thought they were saying, I tried to look it up, that's why I got on my Switch before. I think it's right, but I couldn't tell for sure. I think they're adding it to the... Um, SNES Classic Online, like the, oh, okay. like the store, like the what you get if you have the online membership. How you can play those games. That I'm pretty sense. sure that's what they're adding it on. Because the but SNES Classic is kind of hard to find into right now. That would be cool, and I definitely think that'd be an awesome feature, like you said, to be able to add games on there. But I don't think it has that capability. I think that's what they're saying is that it adds it to uh, your online subscription. Makes sense. But that's all I had. And like I said, I think all those you kind of weren't sure about. I just thought I'd bring up those discussion points. But uh, if you have any cor- corrections, questions, or feedback, you can send to currentbacklogs at gmail.com. And then should we get into some news? Let's do it. I feel like there's going to be a lot of it. You want to start or you want me to? Uh, sure. I don't have much. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. I felt like I was getting too much. Oh, man. <laughs> well, I figured you would cover the okay. meat and potatoes. Let's see. Find my little thing here. This is from the xboxnews.com or news.xbox.com. Um, beginning September 24th, fans who purchase any medium or large drink via the Taco Bell app or in person will receive a code on the cup for a chance to win the new Xbox Series X bundle. You can play up to three times per day, and we mentioned there will be. <laughs> Where is that? I lost my place. I don't know what they what they mentioned here. Um, get your hands on a free taco. Oh, there's other awards with it. It looks like, Uh-oh. which is kind of cool. I wish they'd done that with the previous ones. Yeah, I think this is the fourth year they've done this. Um, <clears throat> it says, make sure you sign up for the Taco Bell's all new reward program. All you need to do is download the Taco Bell app and join Taco Bell Rewards Beta program by September 13th. 
Those that have opted in to receive emails will be able to register and gain exclusive access to the included in daily drawings from September 15th to September 21st. So there's a lot of steps to get more chances of winning an Xbox One X. But from what I can tell, man, you would actually also get the console early. Yeah, so you're telling me that's bonkers? I think that's the way that I'm reading it. Let me, let me, because it doesn't make sense because those people are just going to hop on YouTube and be like, look at all this. Yeah. Um, purchase, it says, for a cup, for a chance to win the new Xbox Series X bundle, you can collect three times per day. There'll be a winner, oh, do we mention there'll be a winner every 15 minutes throughout the promotion? Six months ownership. Um, it says, yeah, it doesn't really specify, but it kind of leaves it open-ended for that. Yeah, it looks like it. It says, Xbox and Taco Bell first partnered in 2001 to launch the original Xbox, so it's only fitting that the two reunite to bring friends in the brand new Xbox Series X almost two decades later. I like how Taco Bell does not talk about how they were in beds with PS4 for a while. <laughs> Don't forget that. But yeah, man, so I always like those little... My only issue, dude, is drinks. Come on, dude, I want some food, bro. I'm not buying three drinks a day. I mean, that's the best thing Taco Bell has, though, so... Oh, God, um... That's kind of upsetting, because I don't want fucking three yeah. drinks. And it looks like they were larges, too, so... That's why I need more aspartame in my life. More empty calories. <laughs> So, the cups kind of look cool. Definitely keep one of the cups. Um, what else news Why? What do you think? Will, you, will this make you go to Taco Bell? No. I, I do think it's a cool idea, especially if you can get it early. I just feel like that's one of those things that, obviously, somebody's going to win, so I shouldn't think like this. I just am like, that's so un impossible for it to be me that I usually don't try with this kind of stuff. But, like I said, I can backfire, too, because somebody has to win. There's no rhyme or reason to it, either. Yeah. I think that last one... I really went in hard. I was kind of working on a YouTube video for it, too. Uh, maybe one day I'll release that. Maybe you're making some ridiculous <laughs> ass video. Um, <laughs> maybe I think about doing a video where I do the history of fast food and video games with the, our video. That'd be cool. Um, I think we ended up buying, like, over 30 during the whole promotion. Never won anything. Uh -huh. And people hop on these Facebook groups and like, dude, I just got lunch there and I won one. Yeah. The fuck, Taco Bell? Yeah. I spent hundred dollars on your fucking everything. There is a tortilla and cheese. I spent hundred dollars on tortilla and cheese, and I get nothing. So uh, I will definitely be doing this one. I'm just a little pissed. It's drinks. It's like <laughs> I just buy the cups. Like, yeah. I don't even want the fucking your Mountain Dew, Baja. Can I have six Baja Blast? <laughs> Ooh, a good way to do it would probably be the trash. Oh yeah, that's disgusting. But I'll dig through some trash. Why not? <laughs> So, yes, that is, uh, let me figure out where, I got everything on, like, three different apps right now. I think that's it for I had news, because you oh, really? mentioned the other thing. Um, the and you, yeah. you had one other thing. Oh, yeah, um, uh, it was Zelda. Zelda, yeah, Zelda, they announced that Hyrule, Hyrule Warriors. I'm excited for it, man, because I did not like, uh, the new Zelda, and I like Hyrule Warriors. And I like the Dynasty Warriors uh, aspect of it. So I want to go back and play it and go into that world without that ridiculous mechanic of breaking weapons. That is the worst um, part of the game. I can't. That's why I can't get into it, I think. I was going to say, I know when it first came out, you said you loved it. Was mm -hmm. that just because... Uh... Oh, it wore off real quick, buddy. <laughs> At first, you're like, oh, it's cool. I have to use all my weapons. <laughs> it forces you to use them. And whatever you got, you use. And you're like, damn, I really like this weapon. I'm going to keep coming back to the spot to find this weapon. And that novelty wore off real quick. I gotcha. Yeah. No other news for you, though? No, that's it. All right, you ready to get into this, all this nonsense? Let's do it. So the biggest news of the week was that we finally got confirmation of the Xbox Series S and a pre-order and release date. It was kind of crazy. It all just happened at once. But uh, the Series S, which is official, we all knew that was going to happen anyways, is, well, they're both coming out November 10th, and the pre-order date is September 22nd. And the Series S would be two ninety nine, or the uh, do you see the installment plans you can do? Yeah. The twenty four ninety nine a month for twenty four months with Xbox All Access, so you get Game Pass and everything included. But I did the math, and if you do that for twenty four months, it's going to be five hundred ninety nine seventy three. So 
by that point you could buy a Series X. I get that's the point of that is for people that don't have that money, but it's still fucking crazy that that would get you a Series X if you had the money. If you want to see some crazy figures like that, look at Rena Center. Oh, and, yeah, I know it can be. I've Very heard about nice. that. And then that's uh, they're promoting it as the smallest Xbox ever. And then the world's most powerful console, which is fantastic there for marketing the X <laughs> like that, is going to be four ninety nine, And like I said, the same pre-order and release date. And they're doing a similar um, all-access for thirty four ninety nine for 24 months, which I did a math equals out to 839.76. I know part of that you're getting Game Pass for that long, so it's not completely that much more, but that's still way more than you pay for both those combined. I wonder what's happened if people don't pay those. I don't know. I'm Which sure it's in the terms and service, but yeah, I don't know how that would work. It'll really ding your credit for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I have other things here, but we can start with there. Um, what do you think about the uh, release date, the price, all the stuff that we've been debating forever? What's the exact date again? November 10th for both of them, and then pre-order date is September 22nd, so couple weeks it's kind of weird they announced the pre-order date yeah um that's really meta it's like I, I get why they do it is that across the board too they said every every retailer i'm assuming so because that's this is all from xbox official website so i'm guessing they're just telling all retailers to do that the date makes sense that's right around the same time as last gen yeah and honestly, it feels um, like the Xbox 360, I felt like, was around then, too. Yeah, it was. I don't know exactly what I should put in here, but... So that makes sense. Uh, nothing nothing blew me out of the water. All shit we knew. I'm starting to think Microsoft also snuck some of these out there as leaks. I've had that on here after, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm surprised you don't have anything more, because I thought I'll... I won't about be doing the... the payments. Oh, no way. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> bananas. Don't do that. Um, before I add more, I saw you said how you need to save up for the next gen. Are you doing it again now? Because last time we talked, you were like, I don't think I'm going to buy any of them now. I'm not a launch at least. I said that? I thought so. It might have been Garrett. Uh, I thought you did too because I said there's Maybe. nothing really coming out to make you buy it, which is true, sadly. Maybe I did say that. I don't know. I can't remember. But, yeah, I would like to get them day one. Are you trying to get both Xboxes and the PS5? Uh, no, I'll probably uh -oh. put off on the PS5. You'd I rather... have so much more PS4 games to play before I feel like I can move on to the next one. You'd rather have two Xboxes over that, though? I know the price is going to be different, <laughs> what I'm assuming. I'm thinking so, yeah. Really? Yeah, that's weird, but <laughs> I'm a pretty big Xbox fanboy. <laughs> um, usually, like, when we go to game stores, that's the first section I'm running to is some Xbox 360 and original Xbox. Yeah. I just always liked the Xbox. I really want to support them, and I think that the concepts are really cool. And it'd be nice to have uh, in different rooms. Um, the PS5, there's nothing really that's got me too crazy. Because right now I'm looking, all Xbox One games minus Kinect games will play on them. We'll play on both of them. Yeah. And then my disc based stuff will play on my main one. I have a bunch of games already to play on it. Yeah, that's, I think, what's uh, killing my excitement. That's what everybody's saying. Uh, man, imagine how good Destiny's going to look in all the games they play now. My is that? I mean, I backwards compatibility is great, and it's uh, Sony's definitely lacking in that. They're not being nearly as transparent. But at the same time, I'm like, this is depressing. Is this what it's going to turn into? I could see that. There's no excitement. Yeah, and I feel like it's trending even more. What we talked about in our old podcast of how it's just going to turn into PCs, where you're just buying these for upgrade. And I feel like that's literally what people's minds are now. They're, man, imagine how good this game's going to look. I'm playing. You have a ridiculous um, memory. <laughs> I couldn't tell you shit, <laughs> shit all we did on that thing. That's crazy. I just remember stuff like that because, um, obviously, you know how much I care about games. And so it wasn't just like I said on a podcast and it's crazy that it might be happening now. It's just I think about this even aside from podcasts and think about games like that all the time. And yeah. I feel like that's definitely what's happening. And like I said, I feel like people are even just kind of like trained like that now, like, no, dude, Fortnite, though, I get to play that as soon as it comes out. I'm like, what? But you can do that now. I yeah. get that's going to look better, and that's cool that it transfers over. But that was, like, the least exciting thing when you get a new console is to play the old games. Yeah. That's kind of just, like, the back burner. Yeah, I don't – I really can't think of too much of a reason why I would 
Pass on it, at PS5, and I don't see many exclusives on it. Yeah, I don't see many. I feel like Xbox is even lacking more in that, yeah, though. Yeah, they especially are. Especially after losing Halo. Yeah, oh, most definitely. But if I so basically, it's like, which camp do I want to be in? Yeah, it's like, let's go drop eight hundred on some Xboxes. I don't. Once it comes down to that, I I doubt I'll be able to get two. But right now, in the land of ignorance i'm like i can i can get two um i'm surprised i know you said you get two and that's why you do it but i'm surprised you get uh the digital one at all because you're so against that i am but the fact that it's so small and that i could just put it somewhere like a bedroom tv or another yeah. tv somewhere and just have another place to play xbox that sounds good yeah um yeah how small it is i think is really cool if it's really gonna be the smallest xbox ever things gonna have overheating problems I don't think it's gonna, cause there's fucking that massive black thing on it, which that's what I was gonna get into. I, I know we were texting a little bit about it. And you said you want to see it in person, person first, and I do too. But, and like these console, like the Xbox Series X and the PS5, you know, I think those actually look really cool, even though most people hate on them. Same thing with I said about those and the controllers. It all depends how it actually feels and looks in person pictures and videos only go so far so I could change my mind but this thing as soon as I saw it, what the fuck is this and like I just said I'm actually very fond of the other two and those have been nothing but made fun of in constant memes so I'm not somebody that just joins in on the hate because I'm definitely in the minority on the other two and this thing I thought was fucking horrendous I uh I will not see it in person like I said but I can't imagine it changing because I do think it's cool that it's the smallest Xbox ever, if that's true. And the actual design, like the all-white small block, I don't think it looks bad. I just think it was super generic. It literally looks like an Xbox One, which is, I feel like it goes farther than my fear. That it's kind of just like an upgrade to, because yeah. it literally looks like Xbox One. But then I don't understand the fucking black thing on it. Everybody's like, well, that's that has to be where the, um, the heat's coming from. I was like, okay, well, for one, there's, I don't know if you looked on the, both sides there's giant vents so is it going to be that hot and then even if it is no well you need a that's probably where what Derek call it he said you probably know like input and output fans or something i can't remember the word he used that sounds input output like air coming in air going out yeah and i was like okay that makes sense but still why does it have to be a fucking giant black thing that takes your attention why can't it be white and just go in with the console yeah (laughs) i don't have you seen the memes that it looks like a yeah. fast food uh, uh-huh. speaker, fast food drive, like the speaker you're talking to? That's the uh, first thing I thought when I saw it, not a drive through speaker, but I did think a speaker. I was like, mm-hmm. what the fuck is that thing? And I was like, maybe I knew it wasn't, but I was kind of tricking myself to, because so I was like, maybe that's a disk drive, even though I knew it wasn't. I I appreciate your different perspective, because you always give me something different to think about. I feel like I'm sometimes I fear I just buy into the hype. <laughs> I'm like, yes, give me 30 of them. <laughs> like, the new Xbox, the most powerful Xbox. I'm like, yeah, I'll take six. And then you're like, well, this doesn't make any sense. We can't really get excited because there's no games. I'm like, shit. Well, I don't want to kill your excitement. And Oh, you're not. If, yeah, I mean, everybody has their own view, and that's just how I'm looking at it because I want to be excited, too. And I say, yeah, I'm, just I'm not even, <laughs> I wasn't even ready for a new generation. I was literally going to buy an Xbox and had Halo be my excuse because I wanted to have an excuse to buy it. But yeah, once that went out, I was like, oh, fuck. But, um, yeah, I just don't understand, even if it is for a heating issue, why it had to be black and why, who the fuck designed that. And if it was white, I think it would look a lot more clean. I think it would uh, definitely still look generic and just like a really plain Xbox One. But I think it at least not have that glaring thing that catches your attention that everybody makes fun of. Yeah, I, the fan services that Phil Spencer has done, it's like, has it ruined the the next uh, consoles? Because it's nice for everybody that has that stuff, but it's like, you're right. You have like five or six games to choose from, <laughs> one or two in there that you're really excited for. Damn. Like I said, to be fair, I don't think Sony's much better. I think they actually do have, you know, I prefer Xbox as well. I like both of them. The Spider-Man? Um, Spider-Man, they have, uh, 
a lot of people make fun of it. I am excited for it, the new Sackboy game. That's supposed to launch with it. Oh, it's a launch show? Yeah, that's what they said, at least. Uh, Ratchet and Clank is a launch window, so it should be within the first few months by the end of Christmas, I would imagine. So, I know that's not a lot, but compare that to what it is Xbox having to compare to that. Like, yeah, I get that's not a lot, but I feel like Xbox somehow is, can't beat that out, which is fucking crazy. Yeah, but also those are like games I'd like to play, the, the ones that came before first. Yeah. I got in there. I just... I just must be fanboying for <laughs> Xbox, man. I just love Xbox. It's an American company, yeah. Microsoft. And it's been... When I got a PS2, it was always like, man, I want that Xbox. I want that. And when I finally got an Xbox, I loved it. Um, my go-to game was fucking Brute Force. <laughs> but I just have a crazy connection with that, because I feel like that's my Nintendo. Like, when people freak out about Nintendo, I feel that way about Xbox. So now I'm one of those Nintendo boys that's just like, shit, new Mario? Yes, give me four. If I'm that way with Halo, or uh, Xbox. Yeah. Um, let me know if we're staying on this too long. I just feel like this is the biggest news in a long time. No, it definitely is. This is huge. Um, I feel like the, huge. um, I knew this was going to happen. Huh? Huge. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen, but I also feel like the, uh, Hard drive space is fucking ridiculous for both these things. I don't know if you saw the specs. I didn't. What are they? I so, like a loop. on the digital... I'm going to call myself a fanboy. On the digital, you have... Where is it? Mm-hmm. Oh, I have a question. Mm-hmm. Before I forget. Then I'm going to forget. There Which one do you think will be sold out more? Which uh, one do you think will empty on the short store shelves first? I bet the Series X just because they're going to have less of them. I think the... S will sell more because that price point. I said that's when we talked when uh, this was rumored. I was like, they can hit that. That's gonna fucking sell like crazy because every parent's gonna be like, I'm gonna spend two hundred dollars more on the the same Xbox, and I feel like everybody at GameStop and all these places are gonna be trained to market that because Microsoft's gonna want to push them. That payment plan too is gonna get a lot of people. Yeah, because they're not looking at it like you are. Like, oh, twenty four bucks, I can afford that. Yeah, yeah, but for two years. You... That's why I added it up, because I was like, that doesn't seem too bad, but, yeah. And, uh... What if it gets stolen? Are you still paying that? Of course. And it seems like Microsoft learned their, gen- uh, learned their lesson with the last generation, but what if we really have one, another issue where it's like the red ring of death? Yeah, that, when I hear the smallest console ever, I'm like, that thing is going to be a <laughs> fucking lava brick. When they said the biggest, like, when the uh, Xbox Series X is, um so big i'm like that's nice that's what you want you want like a pc tower but then once again you're closer to pcs yeah. but the original xbox was supposed to be the console pc yeah so i feel like they're kind of getting back to their roots which is why i don't mind as much especially with the games also now being available on pc it kind of feels like the original <coughs> xbox launch where stuff was on both um but yeah um i'll say one more thing about that since you brought it up the uh i forgot about the leaks about what the S was going to look like, like a GameCube style version of the X. And I said then, I was like, I don't feel like that's going to, it's going to look like that at all. But now that I'm seeing what it looks like, I don't know why the fuck they didn't do that. That would look so much better and fit in with the line. And baby one. Yeah. I feel like it's so weird. They just made it look like an Xbox one with a, a speaker on it. Um, but the hard drive space on the S, which you think you'd want more hard drive space than that. I get that this one is way more expensive and should have a bigger hard drive, but only has a 512 gigabyte hard drive. And even what? 512 gigabytes. And then the... On uh, the Series S? Uh Uh-huh. Okay. okay. And the X only has a terabyte. Yeah, that's bad. And... That's not good. That was my worry. What terabyte, two terabytes? Yeah, and I had a feeling it was going to be something like a terabyte, but I just feel like that's fucking ridiculous and just setting you up to buy these uh, memory cards like I talked about. And I don't know if you saw, it's rumored that the Seagate storage expansion card, the thing I talked about, which adds one terabyte, is rumored to be $250. Stop. So, fuck off. If you've got your, uh, your Series S and your hard drive, or your memory card, you're going to be paying more than you would for the X. And if you're buying an X and then you get that, 
You're paying half the price you did for your X for another terabyte. There's going to be a lot of workarounds. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I PS4 think, is really accepting to that. Yeah, I think part of the issue is that it has to be SSD this time. So. Oh, that's right. That's why the expansion, the uh, expansion yeah. card, yeah, that's what they're calling it. But I think you'd want SSD. You'll want to go the extra mile. Yeah, man. That load time. Yeah. That, this price tag has been crazy. See, now it's like, now if you add in those things, an extra controller, now you're getting to PC level. Yeah. With not PC power. Um, there's also a rumor today, this is just a quick rumor, but the screenshot looked real official, if it is fake, I don't know if you saw it, for Xbox Series V, which, uh, I should have... What are we doing anymore? <laughs> I can't keep up with these fucking names, dude. This is this is why PlayStation makes so much more goddamn PS1, PS2, PS3, PS4. They're over there like, Xbox Nightwing, this summer, one man... Phil Spencer named shit so stupid. I'm getting so mad. What is this? What is this thing? There wasn't much Xbox to it. Xbox it, uh, it was. It's funny you said that. Somebody said they should have named it the Series E. You know, what the fuck? And then I realized they were saying that because Series S, E, and X, so it'd be sex. <laughs> I'm like, oh my fucking God. <laughs> they didn't even explain it. I was like, why the fuck would it be E? And I was like, that has to be what they're saying. I would, I would, I would that'd be so great. Have all four Especially... Especially if people mocked and called the sex box early on. So sex box. They just committed to that and acted like it was innocent. Remember when people called Facebook fuckbook? Yeah. Oh my god. Um, sex box. But the V is rumored to be in between that. It looks like what makes more sense, uh, a miniature version of uh, the X. Not in like the height, but in like the width. It looks like it's kind of just like shrunk. Um, but uh, I don't know it any more than that. Convoluted. Yeah. Um, I don't know any more than that, but Microsoft was still supposed to have an event like three weeks ago, so I don't know if that's ever going to happen, and maybe that's where this is coming from, and uh, they said they're still going to have more to talk about, but we're getting pretty fucking close, um, and then... Are they just letting the engineers go crazy over there? <laughs> because we need the Xbox 4. <laughs> the last thing I was going to talk about with this is the leak. Yeah, I feel like... A lot of time, I feel like every time some movie leaks, there's it's like conspiracy theories now. Somebody's like, "Oh, I think they did it for this," but this one, I think, had to be intentional or internal. Especially, they leaked it to somebody named Brad Sams. Do you know who that is? No, I didn't either. And he only, wait, this is gonna sound bad. I'll explain it though. He only has thirty thousand Twitter followers and thirty thousand YouTube, or, uh, YouTube followers or subscribers. And I said that's gonna sound bad because we have nineteen. So I'm not insulting him. We're not even fucking close. But as far as, like, influencers or whatever, that's fucking nothing. Yeah. So I think it's weird that Microsoft would trust him. But then I looked, and Greg Miller and Jeff Keighley and every big person in the industry follows him. So this is fucking weird. And he's from Cincinnati. It says he still lives there. Now this... Is he from something else? No, it's, uh... He's from the BWW Media Group. But I went to that website and it was like a like a blog spot website, like not a. I was like, oh, maybe it's like a, I don't know, like USA Today kind of thing where it's like a bigger outlet or something. But it looks like it was junk. So, the fact that he got it and then all these people follow him that are so well known, I was like, I feel like this has to be intentional. I don't know, and the fact that he, I don't. Did you see it when he leaked it, or no. when it? It was the night before it became official. I even saw it, and I was like, oh, shit, is this really it? And I saw the designs, and there's no fucking way that's it. <laughs> and I was like, well, I should give this guy a look at his account. And then I was like, oh, he doesn't have a ton of followers. I don't know who he is. None of this adds up, so this is definitely not real. And then Microsoft confirmed it, and I was like, holy shit, this is all real. And he had a video like, showing off the console and everything. So I feel like there had to be some uh, work around there for him. Yeah, record companies have done this leak yeah. a thousand times, so I'm sure Xbox is stealing a page from their book. I don't know, maybe they intentionally went after somebody that is, like, respected but not well-known, because if they gave us, like, IGN or something, everybody would be all over and be like, so maybe it was intentional that they gave it to somebody that is well-known but not going to get a lot of attention for it. Yeah. Um, and then, oh, something weird that I don't think, I don't even know if you'll care about, 
and I don't think a lot of people will, but there's not going to be an optical cable on the Series X either, or optical cable port, which I use that with my soundbar, so that fucking sucks. But couldn't you put the optical cable in your TV? Well, there's not a port on the Xbox, so... Um, oh, you mean... Oh, okay, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I guess I don't even plug it. Yeah, I guess I don't. But that does seem weird that the console wouldn't have it. But, yeah, that defeats my whole purpose because I don't do it like that. It's so funny how little people know about the optical cables. Yeah. Like, my mom and stepdad, they have a really nice surround sound with a really big TV. And then they turn movies on. Like, oh, we got to turn the surround sound off because it doesn't work for the movies. And I'm like, what? <laughs> they, like, turn a DVD on. You can still hear, like, commercials from their cable. I'm like, guys, it's like a $10 cable. It's an optical cable. Just plug it in. And, my God, man, I was, I was out of high school before I discovered those. Oh, really? Yeah, those are life-changing. Yeah. Those make the surround sound so much nicer. Well, I've never heard someone running one from an Xbox or actually using that thing. Yeah, that's. Uh, I had a whole quote that I was going to read about why they did it and uh, how very few people use it. It was uh, Phil Spencer's on Podcast Unlocked, and he was talking about it, and he said uh, he knows Ryan, the host on there, uses it, but he said majority of people don't. So I don't know, maybe it gives you a more direct sound, like you're not passing through multiple things and makes it more pure or something. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not going to read all that because, yeah, you definitely just defeated my whole point of that. Um, in a good way, though, because um, I wasn't thinking that, yeah, that I don't run it through the Xbox. I saw that and I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, some of those sound, uh, I forget what they call them, sound uh, people that just love the audio files. Oh. Uh, maybe there's some weird delay by going through, from going to your TV and then through the optical, maybe, but I've never noticed it. Yeah, I'm guessing it's probably something like that, especially. You listen to podcasts unlocked, Ryan. Seems like a... What's funny? What's that? There is a delay. Because, there... yes, I just took out my surround sound to our TV downstairs and we were watching a movie. We'll get to the movie. And <clears throat> Renee, Renee's like, why is there an echo? And I was like, oh, you have to turn down the TV. Oh, yeah. Because it's you, that's why you get the echo. And that delay would be why you get an echo. Because if there's no delay, it'd be yeah, it's spot insane. on. But there's not that much of a difference. I wasn't watching the movie going, that's, that's a millisecond off. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what uh, Phil Spencer was saying in the interview. And uh, he said that he understands people use it, but he said, I guess I could read part of it because it was interesting. I was just kind of pissed about it. That it does make sense. Because um, he said how... He said, let's see. So if you look at a part of a, on a console that's maybe $1 or $2, and you say, oh, this is also on a podcast, so that's why the quote is going to sound like I'm just talking because he was casually talking. It's not like a direct quote. Um, so he said, start over. So if you look at part of a, on a console that's maybe one or two dollars and you say, okay, how big of a deal is that inside of a console? That's a, that's a few hundred dollars. But then you say, okay, we're going to plan to sell, you know, 100 million of these consoles. So you take two bucks over a hundred million. Now you're 200 million over the life of the program. So, Hundred million? Uh-huh. Pretty fucking confident. I like your confidence. Yeah. But I don't know if he was that confident. I didn't actually listen to this episode. I just saw the article and I saw it was from the podcast. But uh I can't listen to this one. Oh, it might be a good one to listen to. It was uh just podcast unlocked. It was just Ryan and uh Destin, so I don't think you have issues with either of them and then Phil Spencer's on the entire episode, so it seemed pretty interesting. No guest? No uh, well he was a guest, Phil Spencer. But okay, what what am I missing? Have you been listening to the podcast a lot recently? Um, not much. Okay, you should. You'd be picking up what I'm putting down. Okay, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. So I do think that's an interesting way of looking at it, and kind of crazy that when you boil it down to something that seems so minuscule how much that actually affects the overall production of everything um and like i said it does make sense because yeah it is probably something real only hardcore people would notice although no there's definitely millions of people use an optical cord but i wasn't thinking about it being a specific way like that um then the next thing i had we talked a little bit about it and it's not game related but i just thought we'd make news movies games and shows that Walking Dead is ending after season 11. Yeah. 
This is uh, also coming from IGN. So I had a couple weird thoughts about it, but there's a long quote that can explain some of it, and then we can discuss. And not all of it's quotes, articles, and some of it will make sense, but it says, it's the end of an era. AMC has announced that The Walking Dead is ending after season 11. Although fans needn't despair, Jesus Christ, since the wider Walking Dead universe isn't going anywhere, while the flagship show will conclude with a supersized season 11 consisting of 24 episodes, which will air over the course of two years, concluding in 2022. These years don't sound real anymore. AMC has greenlit a spinoff focused on the fan-favorite characters, Daryl and Carol, which sounds like the fucking lamest sitcom in the world. Uh, wow, spoilers much. <laughs> oh, I, that's part of what I was going to get into. What the fuck? Uh-huh. The, the Daryl and Carol spinoff, which yeah, is set to, dying. set to premiere in 2023. Like fucking sitcom. <laughs> Daryl and Carol <laughs> living in San Francisco. Laugh tracks, everything. <laughs> will be overseen by the Walking Dead showrunner Angela Kang and was co-created by Kang and exec- executive producer... Scott Gimple. In addition to the Car- the Daryl the, <laughs> the Daryl and Carol spinoff series, <laughs> Daryl and Carol in San Francisco. AMC is also developing an anthology series audience. set in the Walking Dead universe, t- titled Tales of the Walking Dead, which is described as an episodic anthology with individual episodes of arcs or arcs of episodes focused on. New or existing backstories or standalone experiences. And then we're going to get a lot more here. You ready? Or should we discuss that first? Go for it. Get, get in there. Dig in there. Okay. Just keep reading. Am I getting annoying with my Daryl and Carol? Oh, no. I don't care. I just need a sound bit for it. Uh, the self contained structure of the new standalone series. Um, that's what the hell? Just cut off there. Okay. There's a word there is missing. Pays the way for episodes that could be centered around backstories we've seen in the comics, but not on the show, not on the show such as Robert Kirkman's Here's Negan Origin Story, which I didn't know was a thing, and Negan Lives, sequel about Jeffrey Dean Morgan's potty mouth character, or introducing characters from ancillary content in the world of the show. Clementine, anyone? That's what it says in here. AMC Who knows. Who the fuck wrote that? <laughs> Your potty mouth favorite, <laughs> Negan. AMC. Can Clementine, anyone? <laughs> Jesus. AMC notes that they're also developing other projects set within the Walking Dead universe. And uh, we still. <laughs> and we I still have the Rick Rhymes movie to look forward to. Uh, yeah, as we well do. as the wow. launch of. This two-season limited series, The Walking Dead, Worlds Beyond, <laughs> Worlds Beyond on October 4th. Check out an exec... Okay, we're skipping over that. The Walking Dead has also expanded its 10th season with six additional episodes. The episode that was initially intended as a season 10 finale was delayed, delayed due to COVID-19 and will also air on October 4th before World, <laughs> World Beyond premieres. The six additional episodes will bring season 10 total count to 22, making it the longest season yet. For those keeping count, that's six ep- six new episodes in season 10 plus the 24 episodes for season 11. We will have 30 episodes of The Walking Dead to watch before we say goodbye to the series. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you know, they left something out in that, though. What was that? <laughs> this summer, Michonne's going to get her own roller coaster. <laughs> Carl's so, going to have a new drink called Where's My Eyeball? So, based off what you're saying, I feel like you're going to have some similar thoughts as me. Yeah. What, is that? Yeah. Oh, my God. I feel like it's weird that, for one, that they're ending it. I mean, most people might think it sounds weird. Like, 11 seasons, that's pretty good. But the point of the Walking Dead comic was that it was a never-ending thing, and that was just going to be ongoing forever. And then you assume if they're ending it, that's probably, like, not a good sign that but they kind of have to end it and they have no choice because it was set up to be an ongoing thing. But then that's obviously not the case because they're going to end it and then start three more shows and a movie. Isn't there a web series already and then there's the other TV show as well? Yeah, Fear the Walking Dead. Um, so it seems odd because, like I said, I feel like those are two scenarios, but 
it doesn't seem like what's happening. So I don't know why they're ending the main series if they're going to continue all these other series. And what's the point of having a main series at that point? When I was a junior in high school and my friend wouldn't shut the fuck up about this comic and then I watched the first episode and was like, wow, I really enjoyed this. I never fucking thought it would turn into this. This is like the 80s Star Wars at this point. Like, I'm waiting for Carl's eyeballs, like, the cereal or something like that. Marshmallow eyeballs. Uh, wow. <laughs> I was kind of happy. I was like, okay, at least they're going to tidy it up and end it. One season, we're done. That's good. But, no, they just doubled down. Yeah, that's, uh, I was bummed. But, like I said, I assume that's because the uh, ratings were dropping or they knew they couldn't keep it going. But then when they're going to do spinoffs, which I think are by default are going to be less popular, I don't see the yeah. point in ending it. When the fuck has a spinoff been successful? Yeah. Or more successful than a show, at least. Yeah. Like Fear the Walking Dead is on a sixth season now, so it's obviously succeeding. But I don't feel like even a lot of Walking Dead fans don't watch that. And um, I think it's cool that with the tenth season they're adding episodes after such a fucking long wait. I feel like it'd be really weird to have one episode and then just go away. I heard that something happened with one of the producers on that show in the first season. Oh, yeah. He was uh, he's a fucking huge producer. What else did he do? And they fired him. Yeah. Um, he did something massive. That's what probably why people are so interested in it. Um, it had been kind of crazy to see how different the show would have been. But they've had different producers like 10 times since then. Uh, or lead producers. I guess I had a friend that was like, my God, he was so nerdy. He was into, like, Magic the Gathering and Pathfinder and comics. The comic book sounds way better than the TV show. Yeah. But the shit that he told me that happened in the comic book, I could never, uh, for spoiler's sake, I won't say anything, I could never see a television show doing. Oh, I know. Yeah, I've read some of it, and there's no fucking way. I won't spoil yeah. anything either. Um, let me try and find this here. Taking longer than I thought. Uh, I wonder what the... Was it Robert Kirkman? Mm hmm. I wonder how he's feeling. I feel like he's just like sold this away, <laughs> signed it away, and just walked away. Cause yeah. From what I could tell, he's doing a bunch of shit over there with Todd McFarlane, and I, I don't know if he's still fucking with Walking Dead. I don't know enough about comics. I like the things comics give us, but I've never been super into reading them. That's how I've been for the most part. Like I said, yeah. even a kid, I collected them and I loved them, but. I went to the pictures and I tried to read them, but I don't know still if it was a read, do you? no. <laughs> I don't know if it's because I was a kid or if I still had the issue. Because so I could read it, obviously, but the spacing was so weird. I was like, I don't know if this part's supposed to come first or who's saying what in what order. So none of this makes any fucking sense. That I just always looked at the pictures and collected them. Um. So that's what he did. Um, the Green Mile. So, I'd say a pretty big movie. Wasn't something shady that happened, too? Yeah, a lot of weird. I don't remember something in particular, but I know a lot of people thought it was weird because he was so high up and was, like, the, the lead on it and then got knocked aside, so a lot of people had issue with it. I felt like it had something to do with the budget. I'm trying to remember. Could be, because... Because it was, like, super successful, and he's like, more money? And then, less money. <laughs> um... um. That first season's amazing. Yeah, I, you know, my pilot episode is still my favorite by far. I think it set up the world so beautifully, and it was like the perfect zombie movie, like zombie movie, even though it wasn't a movie. And yeah. You know, that's the most, that's probably the biggest episode that sticks out in my mind. Really? We've only seen it a couple of times, maybe twice, and yeah, I feel like it. I could tell you everything that happens. Yeah, the, the bicycle zombie. Yeah. That's so good. Um... Yeah, I, uh, like I said, I loved the initial start of Walking Dead, and I watched forever and read some of the comics, and for a long time I was just watching because I was stuck in the trap of watching, I was like, fuck, I'm committed now, but the fact that it's gotten so good recently again has kind of pulled me in to, I'll start, I'll get more into what I've been watching, but it actually bummed me out, so shit, now I'm finally liking this again, and I think it has a really good path. But still, and, it's kind of like. My God, almost three more seasons. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. Seasons. No, that's what I was going to say. We still have a lot left now. But my bigger issue is 
not all spinoffs, because I think some of them are cool ideas, but one, like you said, that we obviously know neither of these characters die unless it's going to be like a, a prequel or something, but I mean, that's going to be the case. So anytime they set up a scenario, you know that what's going to happen every time now. And so that's one of the appeals of Walking Dead is that any character can die at any time. And that's not like a lot of shows. And uh, also, I'm not a big fan of Daryl or Carol. I know that's criminal to say, especially Daryl is everybody's favorite. I don't hate either of them. How but dare you? I was like, that sounds Who's like your favorite? That. Rick? Oh, yeah, by far. Yeah. I, uh, when he left the show, I can't even watch the show anymore. But So I'll stick with it because, again, I'm just committed to it now. I'm actually still probably most curious for the movie because I want to see what he does. That was, again, another one that didn't make sense to me because he left because probably because of Walking Dead fucking became his life. I was like, that makes sense. That's fair. But then he went on to do a movie. I was like, why? Everybody keeps leaving this stuff and moving on to different projects, but then just coming back to The Walking Dead to do different things. It's also weird to me. Yeah. Uh, wow. I mean, I guess if you're going to milk it, milk it. Um... I know the stuff they've done with Breaking Bad, which is like the similar things, but uh, what's that guy's name? Vince, the creator of Breaking Bad, Vince Staple. Oh. I don't know. He definitely put a hamper in the AMC. They would have went nuts with some Breaking Bad, but he clearly yeah. ended the show. Like we'll do Better Call Saul in a movie, and blah, that's it. And he's really seemed to hover over his project, whereas Kirkman seems to be like, yeah, dude, as long as these <laughs> checks keep cashing. <laughs> fucking do whatever you want to man which is nothing wrong with that as long as it's quality stuff but that's I can see now why uh what Vince Gables Vince I don't know what the fuck his name is now I can understand why he probably was like AMC relax that's what I was gonna say I know that was a lot and I have issues with it I think it could go real bad but as long as it's quality like even uh why I've seen the fear of the walking dead there's issues I have with it but it seemed well done even the web series which has no budget yeah look good yeah, so as long as quality and fine, especially because it's not like you have to watch all of it. A lot of it's kind of stories that connect, obviously, but not like essential to it. So you can literally pick and choose what you wanted to watch. Um, the next one, I don't know if you saw this. It's pretty crazy. EA Play coming to Game Pass Ultimate. Do you see that? I did. Um, I'll read that's a bit. like, that's really gunning at PS4. Yeah. That's really saying fuck you to GameStop too in physical media. <laughs> We're GameStop, you're dead. So this is from Xbox officials, Xbox official website. When we created uh, Xbox Game Pass, we did so with the vision of bringing you more great games to discover and play with your friends. Over the last three years, we've delivered on the, ver- the vision by bringing more content to our 10 million members, which is fucking nuts, and in, and we've expanded the service to reach people. Wherever they play, across devices at E3 in 2019. Oh, okay, it's going next sense, so that makes no sense. We introduced Xbox Game Pass Ultimate and Game Pass for PC. And last month we shared that Ultimate members can play more than 100 games from their, from the cloud on their Android phone or tablet beginning September 15th. Which uh, Apple's just left with fucking, I don't know if you've seen that. Apple's, uh, and nobody knows if it's Apple's fault or Microsoft, but they it's just the fucking... Apple. You think so? Yeah, I've, I've been looking into it. It makes absolutely no sense. They're like, we Apple can't, no sense. Hey, they're like, uh, we we can't guarantee the the quality. Was this a quality or the rating of the game? Have you seen some of the dumbass shit that's on the Apple Store? <laughs> you know, all this stuff is quality stuff, and it has no problem with ratings and shit like that. It's just because they're not getting a cut of that money. That's what I was wondering. That's why I thought, and I did think it was on Apple's end, but then a lot of weird stuff is happening with Epic with Apple. It's so. The same thing though. Well, every company did that though. Like Google knocked off their store. Yeah, and, for uh, for the it's like transactions that Google can't get a cut of. It's like workarounds, and they sell Game Passes a similar way. Right. I think so. I just I forget what the Epic thing was. It was like a way to buy skins or something like that, right? Without them getting a cut. Might be it. But yeah, it boils down to that money thing. Uh, which is fine with me, man. Bully Epic all around all you guys want to. They wanted that Chinese money, so now I'll just shit on them. I don't care. But Microsoft, really? Apple? But, hey, they can do whatever they want. It's Apple. 
Um, we're going to skip past part of this. I'm glad I didn't buy the iPad now. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to need an iPad for Game Pass. So, there's a lot of nonsense in here. But yeah, the EA Play, which was formerly known as EA Access, which I didn't realize it changed name. I fucking have EA Access. And was formerly known as EA Origins. They've had three names. Is coming to Game Pass Ultimate in the holiday. It doesn't say when, which I think is weird because it seems like it's a done deal. So I think it's weird that they haven't didn't announce it. Something I have to look up. It's the same price still, right? Yeah, same price. Uh huh. So just you need to stop. You guys are fucking digging in grave right now. So even more reason Game Pass is already a fucking no brainer. I'm jealous of kids nowadays. I was looking at yeah. a little re- rental store. That you have on at home. Yeah. Oh, I know. Fuck. Um, I have an example. I'm not even a kid, obviously. I have an example of that when we get to what we've been playing. Um, I also you wonder... had the, the great-great-grandfather of all this. Uh-huh. It's nuts. It and for free. <laughs> yeah. Not for very long, but Sick it was... channel. Yeah. Um, I wonder how this works for people who already have EA, well, EA Play, I guess. Because I already have it subscribed. I don't know if they're just going to refund you or if you're just fucked over. Because yeah. I pay for the year. I didn't do it monthly. That oh, a, fuck. Yeah. I didn't think about that. It's already EA Access or EA Play, damn it. Um, it was already a good deal. I told you it was like $30 for the year. So it was already a good deal on its own. But that kind of fucking sucks just to get screwed out of that because they made it free. Yeah. We'll see how they handle that, though. Next one. We don't usually talk about stuff that's not for Alley, but we both mentioned this multiple times on here. And it's uh, more of the point I'm bringing up is a fact at the end here that I thought was fucking crazy. So Ninja returns to Twitch officially. I don't know if you saw. says, Tyler Ninja Blevins. He's <laughs> it's so crazy talking about these names and these things on here. Is back on Twitch. He signed a multi, uh, multi-year contract with the platform, which it doesn't say how big it is. I'm curious how fucking much he made off that. Where he made his name and his first stream under the deal starts at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which I already passed at this point. And he gave a quote about how excited he is. We're going to skip past that to get to a part where where he said why I put this in here. So he started streaming in November 2011 and it took him Till 2017 to get 100,000 su- or yeah 100,000 subscribers, which is fucking crazy, obviously. But uh, what's more crazy is it took him six years to get 100,000, and then the next year he had a million in 2018. And by the end of and this is on YouTube, so not even the thing he streamed on. And then by the next year or by that same year, the end of the year, he had 10 million subscribers. So it took him a year to get 100,000. Or it took him six years to get 100,000. Next year, he had a million. And then by the end of that year, gained another 9 million. And then now in 2020, he has 24 million. That is so fucking nuts. That's crazy, man. <laughs> um, that's fucking nuts. That wasn't even Twitch then. That was uh, Justin TV. Yeah, well, that's his numbers for YouTube. I think it's oh, even, YouTube. That's even more crazy because that's not what he... Is yeah. known for us, so. So I think so. That means 2011 would have been YouTube. Still though, if you're streaming on Justin TV back then, which I think is how Joe Rogan started his podcast too, is oh, Justin really? TV. Back then it was a fucking wild, wild west. Justin TV. That was the place where you went and like <clears throat> watch people do drugs. And no joke, dude. People did like fucking heroin on there and saw some wild shit on there. It's like the original, well, actually, probably after the uh, Uno Xbox. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like real drugs, like meth and shit. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty certain that was what, I'll have to ask my friend Andrew, because he's kind of like the the harbinger of all this terrible shit we did as kids. <laughs> Fucking beheading videos and nasty shit we found online. Uh, uh, two Girls, One Cup. All those good and classics. No. I'll have to ask if that was Justin TV where it was like, and it wasn't even gaming focused. It was like people talking. Like it was like a, a radio, like yeah. you just have your own personal radio show. And like, oh, this guy's doing heroin over there. <laughs> I'll have to ask him now. This, this bugging me. We'll be, I don't know. But yeah, it was Wild um, West then. 
before we continue on to the news, not a whole lot more. I know this lasts a while, but uh, you brought up Joe Rogan. I know I don't talk about him a lot, but what the hell is that new set? Oh, you don't like it? I know that's the consensus, too. Oh, is it? I, yeah. even, I don't watch him enough to even know he's getting hate. Um, I watch... I don't have an issue with him, but I usually watch if there's somebody I'm really interested that he's interviewing, so I see episode like every few months maybe. Who out um, of the new people were you interested in? Um, that one was a clip that oh, somebody clip. posted, yeah. Um, and you probably like this guy. I don't remember his name. He was he was fucking freaking me out. He had uh, long white, well, longish white hair, and he's real twitchy and fidgety, and he seemed like a big conspiracy theory guy. It might be Curry. Let me look up. Let me look at his new episodes. But while well, I still can look off of, um... oh, you're are you talking about Ron White? Is that him? It's gotta be. I can't remember. Yeah, he's got definite long hair. He's real deep voice, probably smoking a cigar. And there's a lot of smoke, so maybe. Yeah, that's probably Ron White. That's funny. Like uh, right here. No, it's not him actually. Or it was a lot different. Uh... Let me look up his 2020 photos. I guess his hair isn't that long. It's me. I'm throwing you off with that. Fat now? No. This is bugging me now. I have to go look. Okay, well, I'll read off the new episodes. Oh, shit. I don't know if I recognize the name. Well, some of these make sense. You got... Unless you're talking about Duncan Trussell. But that wasn't the new set. It was It was the new set? Yeah, definitely. It's got to be Ron White, then. Unless you're talking about Adam Curry, which was my first guess. I think there's only been two guests on that set so far. Look that guy up. I didn't know it's that new. Yeah, I think it's only been two people so far. Du, 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 du. Yeah, that's him. Adam Curry, yeah. He, he would have been, the, I think, the first guest on that. Oh. Not the first one on Spotify, but the first uh, uh, yeah. set. That guy, I don't even have like that thing like, oh, he's a douche or anything. It's just how fidgety he was and how really it just threw me off. I couldn't do it. Yeah, um, I don't feel either way about him. I'll have to listen to it. Um, but yeah, I'm not even somebody that watched it a lot, and I wasn't like, so I wasn't a fan of his old set or anything. And I always thought it was kind of weird how run down it looked, but that seemed like the thing, like it kind of fit the style of like a relaxed conversation. And I don't have an issue with his new set, like if it's something like we did, I think it makes sense. I just feel like it's weird for his, especially it seems more of like a gaming set, and that's not what he does at all. And also, I feel like it's super distracting, like the other set. It was so laid back that I feel like you didn't really pay attention to the set. He's had a bunch of sets, so too. Oh, really? I yeah. want to see. That's a little. Um, and he recently moved back. I mean, it, it feels recent, but then you're like, holy shit, that was five years ago? I feel like this current set, man. Jesus. He is so fucking rich. Because uh, he'll build a new yeah. set and be like, we just, we put all this in, our, uh, archery range and workout area, and then just a few years later, he's like, okay, we're moving to Austin. <laughs> uh... Yeah, it seems to be the consensus. People don't like that set. But he went for the spaceship vibe. He wanted to do a spaceship vibe. That's what I thought of. And that's why I thought it felt, felt like gaming or something like that more. And also, like I said, I felt like I was just looking more at the set of what the hell. And just kind of distracted by that. Which I feel like is the opposite of what you go for in that. I really like it. I barely listen or watch the videos. And now they're going to be exclusive videos to Spotify. Yeah. I'm never fucking watching those. <laughs> So I mainly listen to him, so I don't really give a shit what the set looks like. Not here yet. Um, my big issue with it, that no one's, well, there's a few people talking about it, but mainly conservatives. Spotify put all his episodes on Spotify. Not all at once. And removed a lot of conservatives. Oh, really? Like, not, if someone's like borderline conservative, they were, they seemed like they were taken. Like Jordan Peterson, I mean, Jordan Peterson's daughter. Alex Jones is like, <laughs> okay, I get it, we... We deplatformed him. Everybody got together. The collective fucking Silicon Valley all got together. Like, oh, this guy's bad. One time he said this one thing, and now we can all deplatform him. I will eat my neighbors. <laughs> the guy says crazy shit because there was one little thing that he's apologized for. But yeah, in I'm sitting there waiting. Like when is because Joe's seemed pretty like open. He's like, uh, he would explain those things, like, waiting, like, when are you going to explain this? And maybe he does in some, because I'm still on the Miley Cyrus episode. I still got, like, three more episodes to get to where I'm caught up. I'm waiting for him to explain it, which is kind of upsetting. And those, those are, so that, that means they removed the yeah, 9-11 episode, and I think it would be the thousandth episode. 
The <laughs> thousand episode was not with any of them. I'm trying to remember the Alex Jones. I usually have the numbers memorized for Alex Jones. Those are my favorite <laughs> ones. The two. Um, the Jordan Peterson ones are great. I can't remember if the Ben Shapiro ones were removed or not. That's really fucked up. So they take Collins off or not? Because he's not like so. a politician or political person? I don't think so. It's the... Okay, I'll be honest with you. It's not all conservatives. It's like the... As the left would call them, the far right. What, whoever they can throw in that pile of fascists. It seems to be the ones removed. Uh, Jordan Peterson's daughter made no sense besides the fact that he's just her daughter. He's her his daughter. Yeah. She's his daughter. I Jesus know. Christ. <laughs> they do it all the time. Uh, so that's the most... I don't give a fuck what the set looks like, man. I'm like, why is nobody talking about Spotify removing those episodes? They may have been added, too. Actually, let me Google that real quick before I keep talking on my ass. Because they might have added them after... Maybe there's some backlash. Um, let's see. Joe Rogan... Removed... Episodes. Uh, it says the most controversial episodes are missing. And all of these liberal outlets have, in quotation marks, right wing. <laughs> they got the fascists out of there. Um, let's see. So, Michaela, Michaela Peterson. Um, paid $100 million for the podcast. That's crazy. Um, has 1,500 episodes. I love when they just fill these articles with words just so they can um, get some fucking links in there. Let's see. However, quotation right wing guess. But I'm trying to. Okay. Owen Benjamin, Stefan Molyneux, M- uh, Milo Yiannopoulos, Alex Jones. Is that it? And the guy that got Colin on there, too. Uh, I don't oh, know if you saw Colin. Dan Rubin. Did you see Colin was, like, supposedly mentioned in passing that he was texting Joe Rogan trying to get back on one more time? No. Nah. And uh, I guess someone's talking about it in the group and getting no response, but then Dave Rubin also said he hasn't been getting any response oh, really? from him and said it's really weird and he normally wouldn't call Joe out like this, but he's like, it's awkward for even to talk about. So... The fact that he said Spotify has no creative control over it, you know, this is kind of happening. I'm getting a little like, what are we doing over there? You're getting a little Howard Stern on me. Uh, Colin said that? Like, uh, or where did you hear that? Colin said it. I texted, uh, I'm, I don't know if it's like Joe Rogan's manager. I'm sure, I don't know if Colin has his number. And somebody in the group had said, Colin had mentioned that he had, oh. it might have been Twitter, a Twitter response that he wrote said that he had mentioned Joe Rogan trying to get back on the show and got no response. Hmm. Um, but I don't know. I'm kind of worried about it because it was a nice place to go to and listen to all. I'm pretty I, I'm pretty conservative, so I would go on there and listen to, like, his original co-host. One of, well, his second co-host. I don't know what you'd call him, but he was after. Good friend and co-host. <laughs> he was uh, um, after. Uh, Duncan Trussell. So he's kind of like the co-host after Red Band. That's Jim Trussell's brother, right? That's right. And Duncan Trussell is about as liberal as you can get. And so I would sit... Th- I feel like you got to listen to all, all angles. Even how crazy they are, Alex Jones. <laughs> and if you don't do that and you just silence people... Yeah. It's pretty fucked up. And I just want Joe Rogan to speak out. I don't give a... He could be filming the goddamn episode in a toilet. I couldn't give a shit, but I want to know where those missing episodes went. Um, Which means I probably want to go back through and download them again, because now I'm kind of worried once he goes to Spotify completely in December, December 1st, are they, is YouTube videos getting shut down or are they staying up? But yeah, so also I hope YouTube learned their lesson. I think the reason Joe Rogan wanted to leave was he was on ice with them as well. They were always constantly. Yeah constantly at risk of getting deleted and that's fucked up and I hope you guys quickly learn that you're going to have a fucking brain drain on your goddamn platform and all you're going to be left with is mommy vloggers <laughs> My, these are my Aldi pickups and YouTube's like thank you so much your fucking brain drain bullshit subscribe like comment that's all it's going to be left I'm not saying that I'm sort of any intelligent guy but <laughs> that's what they've they've scared away any sort of 
I don't know. What they see is monetizable. Fucking Ryan toys. <laughs> God, making me sick. Fucking. Do you know what YouTube is? They tried to do the YouTube channel thing, like the YouTube Red or whatever they called it. Yeah. Like, uh, um, it's upsetting. There's a another channel I like called I Hypocrite, and they upload compilations of just fucked up. Um, they're usually conservative. They're always conservative leaning compilations of just funny liberal shit. And YouTube's been removing those, and I had to go move to Patreon to <laughs> to pay for those. Uh-huh. I, they just want an echo chamber, and at this point, I kind of I'm waiting for something. Bitshoot is getting kind of close to being something, but I want something to overtake YouTube. I don't want everything spread out on 30 different platforms. Like Joey Diaz left pod, uh, YouTube too. All right. So I think there's a lot of shit going on behind the scenes related to YouTube where. These people they don't see as monetizable or whatever. Uh, Dan Bell had to leave and went to Patreon. He still uploads YouTube, but his main focus is Patreon. So now here I am spending like 20 bucks a month <laughs> because fucking YouTube wants mommy vloggers and uh, I don't even know what's like a big toy unboxings and so the fact that no one's really talking about those two things and I'm more concerned about did you see the red neon lights and Joe not not you. But the people breaking the shit down, like the Joe Rogan fans, it's like, guys, why aren't we talking about this? <laughs> Something weird's happening over there. There's episodes are disappearing, and they're rewriting yeah. history, it feels like. And since moving, I get, since moving to Spotify, his guests have been, like, A-list. And it's starting to scare me. It's like, dude, that's what Howard Stern did before he went to the fucking trash can. <laughs> and I, 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 I hope that doesn't happen. But... That's the vibes I'm getting. Like, it's been like Miley Cyrus. Um, big names. It's like, dude, I want the, the the anthropologist or the, I don't know, just yeah. comedians. I don't want fucking, if I wanted the A-list shit, I would go watch, I don't know, Steve Harvey or Howard Stern show. But it's also interesting to Joe Rogan talk to those people because he talks to those people like no one else does. Like a fucking human being. So it's weird to hear. A-list celebrities. Yeah. You'd be crazy to get Taylor Swift on there. Because he, he, he is like Howard Stern, the fact that he makes people comfortable and they'll talk about anything. I was going to say, I don't know. I don't know if she would. Do, well, I know she wouldn't get on there, but like, even yeah. if she did, I don't know if she actually would be one of those people that get comfortable. I feel like she would still just shut down. Probably. But, yeah, he just, he makes people feel comfortable and opens them up and Ooh. that's something real sexual. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, so I'm more concerned about those things than we're seeing a mass exodus of comedians from California. Well, that's because the whole place is on fire. (laughs) That's right. Uh, From YouTube in general. Oh. Uh, What's the other comedian? God damn it. That is that he's on rocks right now with... uh, Oh, Carlos Mencia? Yes. Nick DiPaolo. That's... Yes, that's (laughs) nice. (laughs) He's real close to getting kicked off YouTube, he says. Uh... I really hope there's a massive brain drain and only fucking thing left on that platform is just, hi guys, today um, what we were doing is uh, we're all going to shoot each other in the heads. <laughs> this is fucking YouTube, man. What? There is so much talent that was on their platform that has run away. You guys had Joe Rogan. You should have been sucking his dick. You shouldn't have been sending emails like, hey, we're going to delete you soon. We're going to delete you soon. Because guess what? Spotify came along and stole him. You guys should have been like, hey, do you want to, do you want to be on our YouTube red? We don't want your fucking PewDiePie running through haunted houses. Or BF versus GF, the game show. Like, then they have the one successful show on there was that uh, fucking Karate Kid spinoff. Cobra Kai. Yeah. Goes to Netflix. Goes to Netflix. It's a huge success. You guys let that one get away, too. There's something weird happening over there, and... I think you guys are a little too concerned about people's feelings and not running an actual company. Fucking Ryan's Toys, like, yeah, that that one's gonna last. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I was at Target today. Guess what? The clearance bin was full of Ryan's Toys. Fucking, that's what YouTube banks on is these kids where their parents use YouTube as a babysitter. 
It's like you're that sure that's probably that could be a big portion of it, but give them their own, like YouTube Kids or some shit. Why why can't I listen to Joe Rogan because you're afraid someone's gonna click on it or Oh my god, a Coca Cola ad ran before a Joe Rogan episode. Now Coca Cola is mad because somebody said somebody said something wrong on that episode. Sorry, I'll stop ranting. Oh yeah, you're good. I that's funny I'm ranting about YouTube on YouTube. <laughs> It's like when somebody gets on Facebook and I, I hate Facebook, I'm deleting it. <laughs> Everything on here is trash. And That's the keep thing. It. It's, it's a great platform to reach out to people. It's got a really good uh, amount of people. But if you guys continue to throw, what do they say, throw the baby out with the bathwater? Is that the saying? I never heard that. that sounds really? Really dark, though. <laughs> I think that's a saying. Now, now I'm like, I'm it definitely could be. I just. Let's see what Google says. That's really meta. Google read that too. What does throwing the baby out with the bathwater mean? According to Wikipedia, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater is an idiomatic expression for an avoidable error in which something good is eliminated when trying to get rid of something bad, or in other words, rejecting the favorable along with the unfavorable. That works. Yeah. That sums it up pretty well. There you go, YouTube. You told me yourself. Google told me what was wrong with YouTube just now. I'll stop. I'll stop. I go on all day about that shit. Because um, I love YouTube. I've been there since day one. Oh, my God, dude. You ever go back and look at the old layouts of YouTube? Yeah. I forgot that how weird it looked. Uh-huh. Yeah, I love YouTube. It's a beautiful thing, and I feel like it's getting ruined, and you're losing a lot of your talent. But they're gaining it with us. We're Boom. bringing it back. Yes, sir. Um, no, I don't care. You're talking at all. Is that still going, though? Well, I know it's a long one. And trying to yeah, keep yeah going. it's still going. Um, so this is probably getting on another tangent, but before I get back to news, I will say one more thing. Um, you know, I walked into two days ago when I came home. Sounds really hot. Oh, no, no, okay. not hot. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Danielle, I told her I was gonna say it on the podcast too. And she said, go ahead, I don't care. <laughs> it was a, a podcast on YouTube called uh, Coffee Talk with My Ex Boyfriend. Coffee talk with my ex boyfriend. Oh, this is literally what Cody's making fun of. I know, and I said then that I watch stuff like that. <laughs> oh, that is. That's interesting. It's kind of like uh, she should check out a podcast called Guys We Fucked. <laughs> that's another podcast Joe Rogan helped blow up. Because um, that sounds really raunchy. Is that a raunchy podcast? No, it's from what I saw really gossipy and like, uh, uh, yeah, like drama. And just... Does she like. Don't, don't, don't listen to guys who fucked to him. <laughs> That's real dirty. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I don't, I didn't sit down and watch it. I just see him passing, but it seems like just like that. It doesn't seem like they, it's like, they haven't been around enough. It doesn't seem too in-depth. We used to work with a group of people like this at the movie theater. That's what that podcast was like. You know what I'm talking about from the manager's office? Uh-huh. A group of people that talk like that. That's what that is. So I don't know why my mind went there. <laughs> How does she do this? I, you gotta get some Daniel you gotta explain this show to me <laughs> So it's her It's her actual ex-boyfriend Cause that'd be awkward as fuck Yeah I guess they're friends still no. uh, Yeah There's some tension there You can't You can't lie to me well, We're still friends Yeah right well, He's probably still in his feelings Like maybe if I do this podcast with her She'll still like me All I right. don't like coffee Or may I have part of her on She's gonna have some angry comment But I think that's what it is Really? That's an interesting premise. Can we pretend to date and then break up and then be like, video game talk with my ex-boyfriend? We could start a new show, yeah. So I feel like that would get a lot of clicks. Be like, what the fuck? That's got to be awkward. Let me look at this train wreck. Probably a whole new audience. I'd be okay with that. <laughs> All right, so just segue back into the news. Wait, can I look up something real quick? Yeah. I bet it has a funny intro. Oh, Jesus. Do you think it's got like emotional music or something? Um, they do workout videos most oh, before Jesus. that, so no, it's probably really over the top of my like top stuff. Talk with my with with Mike Myers. What? <laughs> might not bring it up. I guess I might have some of these details wrong. Coffee talk with my ex boyfriend. How he saved our business. <laughs> How Cameron saved our business. Coffee with my ex. Episode eleven. Oh, that's an ad. No, 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 no. That's an ad sense right there, buddy. You want to get flagged for that one. In case you wonder why I'm screaming. <laughs> Coffee with my ex. Yeah, wow, that's, that's it. So good. It feels really good. It's wow. been a moment. Oh, God. 
You know, I can't even shit on that. No? No, because uh, I listen to No Jumper, which is the rap version of that. <laughs> I thought you were going to start laughing real hard and have a whole tangent. That was that was quite, that's, I mean, that's the intro I expected. <laughs> Here, I'll play, uh, we'll play No Jumper, which is literally the same thing, but with uh, rappers. Oh, no, shut up, dude. You guys are trying to get us flagged. Um, there, no jumper also talks to like a lot of the groupie girls, too. They give you some crazy stories. Um, I don't know. Let's find the intro for no jumper. Why, why can't I find this without it's very, si- very similar setup? I mean, minus some gay lisps. <laughs> Kind of the same thing, except they talk about like rappers, <laughs> rappers like uh, drug dealing days and uh, uh, you know groupies. And but if you just added in like, we should do the intro together like they did. Like let's try it right now. You ready? <laughs> no way. We're just gonna say current backloggers together. The current they kind of looked at each other too. Like coffee talk with my ex boyfriend. Um, do you think he's gay he sounded kind of gay i haven't asked i he has to be gay but then i think he dated her so maybe he's bi because yeah he definitely sounds definitely gay there's a lot of definitely but yeah that's what confused me so i'm guessing he has to be bi if he dated her that's i couldn't expect a different intro from that though <laughs> coffee coffee talk to me <laughs> boyfriend Uh, you know, and I can't, one of my favorite YouTubers is Garrett. Oh, yeah, she likes him. I heard you guys talk about him. He's awful. Oh, I think we said two different things there, but. (laughs) Uh, but yeah. Should we segue back into it? Let's do it! Oh, Jesus. All right, so you referenced this one earlier. (laughs) Coffee talk with my boyfriend. You referenced this one earlier, GameStop closing more stores. Yep. This is a close to it um this is from cnn so we're getting big time gamestop is closing about 100 more stores than they originally planned with a struggling retailer warning of more closing closures next year the company said in wednesday's earning call that between 400 and 450 stores globally will close this year which is more than the 320 stores gamestop originally said in march that is planned to shutter the increase underscores how badly retailers are performing during the pandemic and shoppers shift their habits online. GameStop, that'd be GameStop, so that's weird. GameStop chief uh, financial officer Jim Bell said in the call that the closure will allow us to more effectively and profitably service our customers. He added, there are more to do, meaning closures in 2021 as well. Why do they always BS? There's like three Kmarts left, and every time they close another one, they're like, this is to help service our customers and make the experience better. It's like, just be honest, bro, you guys are not making money and you're cutting the fat. Um, I definitely think that's true, but I'm th- hoping it is, like we talked about, not that they always present in a much more positive route, but I do think maybe it's true that, yeah, they're cutting the fat, like you said, but that it is to increase the stores like we always talk about a smart thing to do business wise is to get rid of the worst ones so the other ones can keep profiting so you don't just do a toys r us thing where you keep all of them and then it's too late so i hope that's what they're doing and as bad as that sounds and obviously it is bad i said they're spending it very positively you also have to keep in perspective that's a lot of stores and obviously everybody's out of jobs and all people go to GameStop at those locations that sucks but they have over 5,000 GameStop still. So that's fucking minuscule compared to what is around the world still. Did they? What's weird about GameStop is you just hear like, oh, this one's closing down. And people are there on forums or Facebook or buying stuff. And it's like, man, I don't. I want to know where these are so I can go, go and yeah. buy shit. I wonder if they're. Well, you probably know because you see it. But are they ever actually sales worth it? Usually when companies aren't actually going out of businesses, they don't give good sales because. Seems like it. Oh, really? Yeah. 
usually they ship that off to other stores since they can still sell them. Well, I'm sure, like, some of the Switch stuff they move around. Or... But yeah, from what I can tell. Hmm. Um, the last few are quicker things and not really whole, like, paragraphs worth of shit. Um, exciting news, The Mandalorian Season 2 starts October 30th. Woo! Um, again, not a whole article there. I just, I'm excited for that to start back up. And uh, I love the first season. Like I said, I feel like there definitely needs to be more actual, not that there has to be Jedis every time I talk about throwing. No, it's its own thing. I get that I don't have to tie into that. But there has to be more substance than just Baby Yoda and save him every episode and then just repeat that. There's some amazing action scenes. The acting is well done. But if you really boil it down, it was, I can't keep this thing anymore. And then he's like, oh, I have to keep this thing. And it happens every single episode. I was like, okay, there has to be some more substance in this. Yeah. I think it's one of the more refreshing things the Star Wars has done in forever. Probably since Rogue One, I'd say. Like, do you, does it feel like Rogue One to you? The, the vibes. I was going to say, that's where I was going to say, the vibes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I agree with you. They'll definitely have to switch something up, but maybe he can start. Uh, I think a big one will be rebuilding the Mandalorian's hideout and fighting a war against whatever's left of the Empire. Yeah. Rebuilding Mandalorians, yeah. And, of course, introducing that uh, Gus from Breaking Bad. Yeah. Such a good villain. Oh, my God. he's gonna. I think he's going to kill it in some Mandalorian shit. That guy's evil as fuck. Yeah, and then they tease him having a lightsaber at the end of the that's season one. One of those guys to me is so good at acting that it's weird seeing him in an interview because he's like so friendly, but you're still staring at him like, yeah. When are you gonna stab uh-huh. those people? So I think I think I don't think you gotta worry about that because I think that there's gonna be some cool shit with Gus. I hope so. Because like I said, that's, the show itself I do think is amazing, but I think if it's just that, then that's gonna get old real fast. Um, but we'll see October thirtieth or. I'm surprised there's not a trailer out yet. The rumor was that it was going to come out a while ago. So, hopefully we get that here soon. The next one, fucking crazy world we live in. Did you see this about Animal Crossing? There's an update, official update too, like uh, not fan-made, that Joe Biden and uh, Kamala Harris put in uh, yard signs into Animal Crossing that you can put in your towns like you would in real life. What the fuck? Yeah, it's a, it's a fucking wild world. Um, if you guys if Donald Trump said he's putting signs in Animal Crossing, people would fucking, I'm never playing Animal Crossing again. That's uh, what I was going to say. I I hate all of them, as you know. But uh, I do think that's a cool idea in theory. And I do think every side should be able to do that. I think that's cool that people can do that like they wouldn't realize, especially if Animal Crossing already is kind of like that. So it makes sense. It's not like... It's Halo, and you're holding a Joe Biden sign. It makes sense in the world like that. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, that's the point I was going to bring up, is that all the video game websites are praising, oh, my God, it's a great thing, because the majority of them are very liberal. So if it was reversed, I think it would change real fast. And like I said, I do think it should be looked at as a cool idea, and if you don't like them, and who knows, maybe, and Donald Trump probably hasn't tried, let's be honest. But, yeah, if he did, I don't think it would go over the same way uh people playing animal crossing too are not trump supporters <laughs> have a strong feeling. there's very few of them uh-huh um i would like somebody to experiment and try to make your own donald trump shit and see if the game deletes it i don't know if it has that ability i don't know how it works because you can't make custom made stuff that's why i pointed out how this is like an official thing that they put into the game yeah, I would like to see someone try to make some custom-made shit and see if what happens. Or if you spell out Trump in signs or um, just put no before you put the Biden side down. I, see, I wonder what would happen. Yeah. Um, the next one, I saw this on Cheap Ass Gamer. Did you see the link for something called Santa's Xmas Adventure Complete Edition for $20 for PS4 <laughs> and Switch? <laughs> no. This, uh... Just uh, glancing got me super fucking psyched because you know how I love Christmas and there's no games to take advantage of it. And I feel like there's actually really cool, creative, silly but creative and cool things you could do for a Christmas game. Uh-huh. So I got so excited and I clicked on it and I might actually try, I'll probably fuck it up, but try and add a video to our video for the first time. Maybe do a trailer over it so I can oh, test shit. doing that. 
But I don't know if you want to watch it right now. Yeah. Um, maybe. It's called Santa Adventure. Santa's Xmas Adventure Complete Edition. Let me exit out of my uh, coffee talk with my ex-boyfriend here. Maybe put the volume really low, so if I do put the trailer in, it Santa... won't be like two audios all together. What's that again? Santa's Xmas Adventure Complete Edition. Xmas. So I got super fucking excited. And then I clicked on this game. Oh, shit. It's from 1996. Oh, is it? That explains it. I was like, is this a fucking iOS game? What is this garbage? Oh, this is horrendous. And I was instantly disappointed. But that's not as funny if it's an older game. 1996. I was three. Three or four, depending. Uh, let's, I'm trying to get some art in here, but... Yeah, it should be. Wait, like FPS? No, not at all. Maybe this is a different game because, like I said, this looks like a straight iOS port. No, not that. Seattle really looks more entertaining. <laughs> That's a weird. It's like an FP. It's called 3D X Mess Adventure. I don't know. Maybe if uh, you can't find it, maybe I won't be able to put it in this video. Yeah, it's called know. Santa's X Mess Adventure. Oh, I think I found it. <laughs> oh yeah, this looks bad. <laughs> I couldn't fucking believe this was a console game. This is what I'm talking about. This is the kind of shit you'd find on Apple and be like, well, we're not sure if Xbox is uh, mainstream fucking most successful video games or is it acceptable. But then it's like, oh, this is a uh, kitten surprise bejeweled unlocked edition. And like, yes, thank you. We'll take that. This is by PlayAsia, so it makes a little more sense. It's like a collector's thing. I don't know who the fuck would collect it. But... Still, I don't know how to fuck this guy physical release and how it even came to the console in general. Wait till you see this. Classic mode. Moving mode. I'm pretty sure they're all going to be very similar. This is the iOS. <laughs> it looks terrible. <laughs> oh my god, this is shit. And my quality for Christmas is real low since I love Christmas so much. Like I said, I watch the corniest Christmas movies and... Movies that if they weren't Christmas, I would fucking judge hardcore and be like, I can't watch this. But I judge Christmas so different because it is kind of corny in its nature. And it's so easy to make a good one because it doesn't have to be some grand thing. And same with video games, but they fucking, they did not nail it. It was like a puzzle thing. This is uh, some shit that you see like you're... Our parents' generation playing way too loud on their cell phones. Yeah. I bet it's got some terrible noise, too. I haven't turned it up, but I know for a fact it's like, blum, 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 bling, bling. These fucking ISO ga iOS games are all the same, where it's like super rewarding and you do one little tiny thing and there's fireworks yeah. exploding. Congratulations! Yeah, as soon as I saw that startup screen and there's like the 50 boxes or whatever, I was like, oh shit, I think I know where this is headed. I was already worried. <laughs> Blunk, blunk, blunk. You get three gold stars for doing completing the tutorial. Congratulations. Stickers. Yeah, that looks terrible, buddy. Uh, yeah. So I'm guessing you bought it? Yep. Did you really? No. Uh -oh. God, no. As much as I love Christmas, like I said, I was ready for a low bar, and that fucking still let me down. That's uh, funny. There's a 1996 game with a similar title. Man. And looked more interesting in one second than that <laughs> did. And it's fucking first-person shooter. Um... And the last thing I had, I noticed the last about four hours in news, did you see that there's a rumor of Borat 2 being made or already being made or finished, I should say? Yeah, I heard he was, uh, it's always funny, just like people fall, like you hear him like going around creating a stir everywhere. Like I remember, do you remember Bruno uh, yeah. when uh, fucking, what was her name, came out and complained? Uh, the drunk lady yeah. from... Um, Fucking America's Got... Not America's Got Talent. You're talking about Paul Abdul, right? Yeah. Like, that's what I thought from the beginning. I just wasn't Didn't sure. Didn't she, like, come out before Bruno came out and was, like, exposing? I think so. Yeah. And, he, of course, he opened the movie with it. Uh, that's a great scene. <laughs> but I remember there were some Republicans he was messing with somewhere. Yes. Um, somebody said that uh, the rumor is that he's going to release it prior to the election to affect and reach the younger voters, which I hope it doesn't mean it's too one-sided, but oh I think... My God. I feel like in all of his stuff, he gets some of the biggest names, like Bernie Sanders, Ron Paul, so I feel like he's all over the place. So. He had Paul Abdul, this woman that's supposedly fighting for humanitarian work, sitting on <laughs> human beings. <laughs> I don't think he gives a fuck about swaying elections. Yeah. Um, Republicans get a little too paranoid. 
<laughs> I'm one of them too. Uh, you've heard me go on rants on here before about the um, Chinese. <laughs> but uh, there is video. I don't know if you saw before these reports came out. Um, somebody was filming him being filmed in L.A. because they saw him driving. And it was one of those things where, like, the truck was attached to the front of the car, so that way he doesn't really have to drive. I'm sure you've seen that in movies where they're not actually driving. It's just, like, a giant film thing so they can move the steering wheel but not crash. And they saw him filming and started, like, filming with their phone, and they tried to peel away to get away from him. Really? So I think they were filming and hoping nobody saw it. Which, how the fuck is anybody still falling for this, especially in the Borat outfit of all of them? I know it's obviously real because, like I said, it. Doesn't make any. It doesn't do any benefit for these people to do this. It just makes them look worse. So even if it's fake, it's not <laughs> helping them. But I just don't know how the fuck these people are this dumb still. I think it's just some people out of the loop, man. <laughs> that older generation, they don't know who poor Ed is. I hope it's true though. Like I said, uh, when he did Who Is America, I was like, man, this. The only thing that sucks about this is that there's not more, and there's an election coming up because it could just feed all the way through the next election. <laughs> <laughs> um. I do think he sways more towards the Republicans, making fun of them. Yeah. But I think they make themselves pretty easy fucking <laughs> targets at the same time. Yeah, I agree with both those. And I definitely think he does sway towards them because he gets more of them. But that could be a thing where, yeah, maybe they're easier to get. But <laughs> I really think they do, man. Yeah. And also, when you're getting people like Bernie Sanders, which are like the top of the ring, then obviously you're not too one-sided because you're fucking potentially – destroying one of the top candidates so yeah i think him and south park is kind of a, a blanket to get everybody um i know we talked about it before but this what that's what the world needs right now south park i yeah i've been saying that since uh fidget spinners were a thing because like, man they're fucking gonna miss out on that and everybody like, no they'll come back and they'll be able to do fidget spinners there's fucking no way they'll do fidget spinners now that's uh, some people probably don't even want fidget spinner fucking are already but then it's, uh, yeah, co- years ago. <laughs> COVID would be, they have so many ridiculous storylines they could do, and then the election, all this shit, and um, I'll get into it when I'm, well, actually, I watched the NFL tonight on top of that when we are watching, but they fucking nailed it with, uh, I don't know if you remember a couple years ago when they were mocking the, um, the protesting, the standing up, or the kneeling, how... Their episodes there said uh, they started making it so sports didn't even matter. Like the announcer's like, all right, he's okay, he is taking a knee. Oh, wow, he nope, he's not taking a knee. And then the national anthem ended. And, all right, thanks for tuning in, folks, because they're saying there's a big coming about that. <laughs> and that's literally if you watch tonight's game or any sports since it come back, it's just fucking 90% about social injustice. And if they're kneeling or if they're standing. Like, the beginning of the game, it started, I think, 30 minutes later because there was so much shit about who was kneeling and who was standing and the team staying in their locker oh rooms and playing uh, both of our national anthems. I don't know if you heard. Both of our national anthems? Yeah, we have two because there's the black national anthem, and this is a real thing. The so, black national anthem? Yeah, because they have their own. Could we get more <laughs> device? <laughs> that's exactly – yeah, people are probably going to think that's racist that I said that, and – Offensive, but that's exactly what I was going to say. They keep saying they're doing these things because they Inclusive. want equality and, yeah, to be included. You know, you're fucking moving farther and farther away. That's not a white person national anthem. It's supposed to be all of ours. So if you want to be equal and a part of it, then. What is the black national anthem? Um, I had to look it up because I didn't even know if it's a fucking thing. But you can look it up if you want. Hey, can you read me the lyrics? Oh, I'm not doing that. <laughs> What the hell is that even? Is this a new thing or an old thing? Uh, it's really old, but it's one of those things that I'm sure even black people be honest with themselves, 90% of them probably didn't know until it became a thing recently. Yeah, this is news to me. Um, Man, you guys really know how to... Lift every voice and sing. Is the name of it? Lift every voice and sing. It was made in... That is not it. It brought Black Mirror. <laughs> um, let me look here. I saw it earlier when it was made, but now oh, there we go. Wikipedia. So, it's a poem 
that was made in 1871 to 1938. I don't know if it took that long to make it. And then 1900s, they set music. They set it to music. I don't know if that's accurate. So I don't think there'd be much music back then. The but. hell is the? I have to go. I have to listen in my car. What the hell? Or play on the phone when this podcast's over. That's uh, that's pretty funny, man. Um, fuck, I don't know. But it was literally watching the episode of South Park. Cause this is terrifying. It was just, yeah. Okay, he's standing up and he's taking a knee. You know, this is fucking commentary of all the stuff over the sports. And, Did anybody stand for the national anthem? Yeah, a good amount did, but then they're really? all like linking arms, and then some were kneeling, and some had their hands up, and then at, uh, one of the teams, the Texans, stayed in the locker room for both of our national anthems. Yeah, and they gotta be careful. Their fan base, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> and then um, they all met in the field for what they call it, the unity of solidarity or something, where both teams all lo- <laughs> all locked. <laughs> This is so oh. smug. I gotta be honest with you. They're so proud of themselves. This is really fucking smug. They all locked arms, oh. and uh, as I guess, again, COVID doesn't matter. They can all literally all link arms and be within inches of each other, even though the earlier in the game good. they have to have face mask and fucking, as you said, Iron Man shields to cover their face. But at certain times, that doesn't affect it. I guess. Just players or everybody. Um, do you mean? Uh, what the Lincoln Arms thing? Yeah, everybody. Everybody. I would say players kind of make sense because they're out there in the field tackling each other. Anyways. That's weird, man. This is a, a weird year. Uh huh. The fuck. I mean, how many more steps could they add to this? I feel like one of the announcers was getting mad about it, but knew that he's gonna get fired. He's like, look, I, I I stand with them, and everything is doing great, and he kept going on and on. But I mean, I'm here to announce a football game, so we're gonna everything they're doing is great. But I, we're going to acknowledge that, and what they're doing is obviously right, but my job is to announce a football game. He said that on air? Uh-huh. Oh, shit. He said it a lot. He didn't like, uh, said a lot more eloquent and um, put it there aside. It wasn't like he was just dismissing it, but I feel like he's also, you could sense that he's like, what the fuck is, what, this is football. You know, there's issues going on. What do you think about your boy at the Reds? Um, the announcer at the Reds? Oh, um... Well, for one, I've never liked him. Really? I'll be honest, yeah. He, uh, his dad was a longtime Reds announcer. He's like a, a legend. He's in, a, about that, yeah, yeah. he's in a baseball hall of fame. It's not even like a bias thing. So, if anything, you think I'd be a huge fan of his just off of that. But he always seemed kind of fake to me and always seemed, uh, like he was trying to be his dad, which makes sense because it was his kid, but it just kind of came off weird to me because I was like, his dad's a legend and it seems like he's kind of just like trying to be him. So I had no connection to him and um, just never really liked his announcing skills as the main thing. I think he's, I did think he seemed fake, but it wasn't like a strong stance about him. I just never really liked his announcing. But all that's um, t- being said to say that I have no real connection to defend him because you'd think I would being a Reds fan and who he is. So I wanted to set that up. Um, so a few things. So you you heard the clip, right? Yes. So it's going to sound bad, but first off, it was fucking hilarious. Uh, <laughs> and do not... Everything I do is out of humor. And I, I think that's... You gotta, you gotta look at someone's uh, motive behind what they're saying, and I think if humor's behind it, you gotta you gotta chill out. I don't know if humor was behind it for him. That's what I was gonna say. It's gonna sound messed up, but I'm saying that. But I don't think it's funny really what he said. I think it's funny just because it was so fucking outlandish. You know, <laughs> wait, what? Did he really just say that? That's also also the fact that. I don't know anything about announcing or anything, but I, everybody knows that's literally the first thing you learn is that there's always potentially hot mic and to not stay stuff. <laughs> and he, not only was it, it wasn't like it was a long break, two seconds later he said, welcome to Reds pregame live. So he knew that they had to be that close to starting yeah. if he didn't think it was on, but you might want to might want watch what he's saying. My and, favorite is when fake people get caught up in that stuff. Yeah. 
So um, that makes me a little bit happier that he's a fake person. Or he yeah. seems that way. Yeah, and I could be wrong. I said the majority of it, I wasn't like, oh, I saw that coming. Even if I thought he was fake, I just, I didn't think he was like that. I just like, hey, he seems kind of. Did he get fired? He got, he's going to get fired, I think. He got, he worked for Fox Sports doing, uh, he's done fucking massive games, he, like uh, not just the Reds. He's done Buckeyes National Championships. He's done uh, NFL games. So they fired him from the uh, NFL Fox. Mm -hmm. So I can imagine it'd be kind of weird if they kept him Fox Sports Ohio because the same company. So if he can work for one, I don't see why he can't work for the other. Yeah. So it seems I feel like they kind of have to right now. He's just suspended with the Reds. Yeah, the NFL but, can't have that way. They have their march of inclusivity <laughs> across each inch of the field as they lock hands, and uh, they're actually meeting in the middle now. They're gonna <laughs> high five as they uh, put unity beads in each other's hair. Uh, That's this racist. Semblance of understanding towards the climate of the world um <laughs> dude what the fuck is going on anymore man that's uh actually gonna bring me to what i was saying with that is that even though i do feel like it was messed up and i don't have a strong affinity towards him i feel like like most things people have the really strong reaction it has to be one way or the other and as that happened it was a double header game, so he's announcing the next game, and everybody's like, "How is he announcing the next game? How is he not fired yet?" I was like, "The fuck? How are you gonna? You can't fire somebody that fast, no matter what he did." I, I people are probably comparing to their jobs where you can just fire somebody, but announcing's a little different. You can't just pull somebody and be like that. But you think you're shitting himself that whole this whole game? Oh it's yeah. Fuck. But then the Reds actually—I don't know if you saw that. It's more awkward. They did uh, pull him off mid-game on the second game. Oh, did they? Yeah, and it was you gotta watch the video, it's so awkward. He's like um it's you never see the announcer in baseball unless it's like pregame. But he's like, All right, and folks, I just wanted and the camera cuts to him and just sitting there. And it's even more awkward because he's a hostage situation. Yeah, and he's in Cincinnati because they were playing in Kansas City and they don't travel. So he's just probably sitting in a studio in Cincinnati. And uh he's like uh something that I deeply regret saying came out on the air apparently earlier today and okay Joey Votto with the home run right there and there's literally a home run as he was doing this I don't think it was Joey Votto but I was like oh my god Jesus. and he's like and and I just I am deeply sorry and um I was this is so awkward and also even though I don't have that much feeling for him I was like this even with me thinking it's fucked up I feel bad and I feel like people have no empathy for anymore, even if you disagree and think something's wrong to have a balance. So this sucks and it is his fault and he's an idiot because even even if you are okay with him saying that, you have to be stupid to say it like that when you know you're about to go live. But uh, I was like, that must be the worst fucking feeling in the world to be like at the top of the broadcasting world, not just the res, but like I say, he's called some of the biggest games in the world. And just be sitting there by yourself and like, oh man, my fucking whole career is probably over. <laughs> my family's probably watching this before I can even tell them. They're probably hearing about it. All my friends are. And I'm just fucking sitting here announcing this. And uh, that must be the fucking worst feeling in the world. And knowing that nobody's going to back you up. But did he regret it because there was a hot mic? Oh, I'm. that's uh, well, that's a weird thing. I thought he seemed fake and I definitely think that's a possibility. But if you watch his apology, it did, and I think most apologies like that, especially when they're so quick after, you are like, you can just tell it's so fucking fake. But that's part of the reason I had a little bit empty. I feel like maybe it was just because he was terrified and he didn't really care what he said. Maybe it was just that he felt like he knew he was fucked, but he seemed like he was just fucking so down and terrified and felt bad. So I don't know, maybe he really just fucked up. And I was like, man, or like I said, maybe... He doesn't care about that, and he doesn't care that it was a hot mic. And he's just like, oh, man, this is a bad feeling. So it's hard to say, and I feel like suspending him is the right move instead of just having a gut reaction and just going off of it. But uh, like I said, I think it would be kind of weird and hypocritical if they kept him in one department of their company, but he can't stay in another. It wasn't like they demoted him. They literally fired him one part. Yeah, it's a good thing he's uh, mainly known for baseball. Yeah. 
Because this would have happened a hot mic during uh, Unity Square in the center of the field. That would have been even crazier. <laughs> that would have been huge news. The way the world's trying to heal right now at the 50 yard line, he said the inappropriate thing. That would be that'd be crazy. Yeah, he definitely would have been. That would have been instant. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm waiting for the pendulum to swing back towards the middle. It's getting uh, it's getting kind of crazy out there. No, I'm with you. And even I like say, even if somebody really did something wrong, and even if he doesn't feel bad about it, and in the worst case, worst case scenario, I feel like. Empathy could go a long way in these kind of situations, and maybe people wouldn't be so divisive and see everything like that. Just be like, okay, at worst, be like, okay, he's a fucking idiot, and I hate him, and he did mean that. And like, but also, how would I feel if I just made a huge mistake, and I know my career is done, and my whole family's gonna be watching and embarrassed, and I feel like everything just has to be so one-sided. No, you're right, and if you're not one-sided, you're just as bad as him. Yeah. Uh, it's, I used to read 1984 and be like, that's really fucking scary. That would never happen in America because we, our government's not that powerful. It won't, we'll, we wouldn't let that happen. But now it's almost like getting to the point of self-inflected Orwellian shit that's kind of, kind of creeping me out, man. I don't do well with the conspiracy stuff like that. And I don't <laughs> like... I don't like this, uh, the word speak, I guess you would, I think that's the George Orwellian quote, word speak. Uh, I think that's it. Let me look it up. I feel like people also, um, it's kind of like, uh, what's that expression? Throwing a rock in a glass house, is that it? Yeah. I feel like people better watch themselves because. News speak, sorry. Oh. Uh, it, as messed up the, as that is that he said that, mm -hmm. I feel like if everybody's being honest with themselves and look to themselves, that they even if they didn't say that, it probably said horrendous shit. And probably at their jobs too, they just their job isn't to talk on a mic the entire time. So it's really easy to point somebody else out what they did wrong, but not be like, well, actually, I've done that too. It's just nobody heard it. And that's the other kind of messed up part. He said that, so he's probably having a conversation with somebody. So I feel like it's uh, just another thing where people say, no, it's even worse because he's hiding it. But it does kind of seem like as long as you hide it, it is okay. Because I can't imagine they're always like, oh, what's what's going on at the Reds game? And he said out of nowhere. He's probably talking to somebody else. So shouldn't that person have just as much? Not like the person that put the mic live. That's something that can happen. That's why you have to have that issue. But the person that's having that conversation with them. Unless they were really just sitting there and he was just like, one of those guys just goes on and on. But it seemed like a conversation that he's having with somebody. Yeah, no, you're right. You know what my mind jumped to? What's that? Uh, the grabbing by the pussy. <laughs> yeah. That whole thing. Uh-huh. Because what's his name was just uh, Bush. Billy Bush, yeah. yeah. Billy Bush was just as guilty as Trump. Yeah. And he got canceled more than Trump. Trump got, became president and Billy Bush has never heard of him again. Yeah, and I, that's what I'm saying. I feel like if the other person might talk in there about like, well, that guy sucks too, but the fact that well, he was mic'd up, but he was, wasn't alive. But since we didn't hear him, then it's okay, even though he potentially had the same exact feelings as the person that you heard say it. But yeah. since you didn't hear it, then it's okay, and we're just going to acknowledge that wait, who is he having that conversation with? And really, unless he really was just a, one of those crazy guys just spewing on, everybody's just sitting there like, what the hell? But I can't imagine that was the case. i got to adjust my butt. I've been sitting here for a minute. Yeah, it's going to be our longest episode for sure. Oh, most definitely. Especially because I'll move us past it so I don't ramble. We're into media pickups. Oh, God. <laughs> well, it started off like, okay, this is not going to be that many, but then, you know, Jay's my birthday, and I was like, you know, I got to celebrate. I put some money aside to buy a, a PS3, all my PS3 bad, uh -huh. but Corona has killed the PS3 market. I'm having a hard time tracking it down. I found one at Half Price Books for $170. I said, you're high as a goddamn kite. This reminds me of Borat when he stands up. In the, <laughs> do you remember that in the yeah. talk show interview? And the guy, am I sitting down? <laughs> is he trying to, uh, is, is he trying to <laughs> shake the hand, too? Hi, my name is Borat Sagadilla. 
<laughs> oh man. Okay. So let me go to my photos here. I had to take a photos. Uh, starting the week off, I had picked up. I was really concerned about finding the collector's edition for Tony Hawk, especially from GameStop because I wanted the that fucking just, ghost. Is the air kicking on? I was being stupid. Oh my god, that scared me. Um. So. Finally, the collector's edition popped back up on GameStop again, so I get the little sweet fingerboard. I got the collector's edition with the the, the fucking deck board. There I have no go. plans of ever skateboarding, <laughs> but I have a deck board now. Then I had gone to GameStop, because I had my $5 thing, mm -hmm. and I had picked up a Over G Fighters on the Xbox 360 for, I think, 5 bucks. That was my free game. And I just happened to glance over PS4 while Peter was looking for his $5 game. Um, they had the collector's edition for Uncharted 4, uh, Thieves' Tale, for the same price as the regular. And I was like, yes, I'll take that for $12. So I grabbed it and took it up. And the guy's like, dude, somebody just traded that in. He's like, it was really nice. I was considering buying it. That's happened to me a few times at GameStop. This guy's like, man, I was going back and forth whether I wanted to buy that. I was like, then I'm like, fuck, dude. Do you want to buy it? All I'm going to do is put it on a shelf. Like, then I feel bad. Yeah. Um, so I picked up both of those. Uh, then I went over to Goodwill. I was waiting for my pizza to be made. And I found MotorStorm, the pack in the head for the 3D TV, uh, Assassin's Creed Revelations, and Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Brotherhood's one of my favorite ones. And I didn't have that anymore, so I was like, let me pick those up. Uh, those were two dollars a piece. Yes, two dollars a piece. Uh, Tony Hawk was a ninety or a hundred. I can't remember. Uh, and then at Half Price Books, um, I picked up Midnight Club Three Dev Edition, Black Sight Area Fifty One, uh, Leisure Suit Larry for the Xbox, Call of Duty Two, Mercenaries. Call of Duty Finest Hour, Prey, The Darkness. We've talked about that before in here. Oh, yeah. I've played it, but I don't have a physical anymore. So let me grab that. Bleach Shattered Blade for the Wii. World Heroes Anthology for the PS2. And NBA Ballers for the original Xbox. Those were $80 at half price books. Um, you're going to love this next one. The Rob Zombie Trilogy. I fucking hate you. It was getting a Steelbook exclusive to Target. And... I don't know if they were afraid they're gonna be stuck with them or what. They did not make many, so all my targets close to me were sold out. Uh, and YouTubers were talking about how quick they were going. And Target does not put a limit on those things, so I watched a YouTuber just grab a bunch of copies and was like, "I'm reselling these," and they were like up to, I don't know, fifty, sixty bucks on eBay. I'm like, "I'm just never gonna get one." And Renee's like, "Well, there's a Target across the street. Go check that." And I'm like, "We're all gonna have it." No, let's just go. Let's go check. We're right here. They're not going to have it. I know they're not. So I go in there, and I can't even find the spot. Most of the targets had a little spot, like Rob Zombie Trilogy, and it was empty. So she's like, just ask. And I was like, well, it would be out here if they had it. She's like, just ask. I don't want to. I was like, kind of like, I don't know. I was shy. I was like, I don't want to bug them. They're counting stuff and wiping down cameras. So I went up there. I was like, do you guys have this? And she's like, hang on a second. She's looking at it, taking a while, pressing on a little computer thing, and she's like, is this a new release? And I was like, yeah, it just came out yesterday, and I was like, this shit sold out in a fucking day. I think that's the issue. Target's got to put a limit on these things. These guys are just going in and grabbing the whole stack. Um, but she's like, okay, I'll be honest with you, our entertainment guy is, has the week off, so we didn't put out any of the new stuff. Like, oh, fuck, yes. Sweet, let's do this. So she sends the guy to the back, and he's looking for a while, and she's like, did you find it? And she kept repeating, did you find it? And he's kind of like mumbling, like, okay, she probably hasn't found it. And there it was in his hand. He's like, here you go, man. So I found it. I had a chance to grab an entire store's worth, and we could be able to flip, but I was like, I'll leave those. But I was very happy to get the Blu-ray trilogy. I don't know why, but all right. <laughs> those are some of the best scary movies, man. Mm -mm. Then I had allotted money for a PS3. And my birthday bash, which was a bunch of game stores and half price books. The first game store I went to was in a weird, it was in buildings that were used for offices, but this guy just converted to a video game store. 
And inside, dude, it's like a fucking museum. It's beautiful. He's got all these store shelves for like PS1, GameCube, like Toys R Us and shit what he used. So it's got like PS2 all over it, PS1. He's got a bunch of good stuff, but not the best prices. But it's nice seeing that stuff because it's even hard to see that shit in stores anymore. Um, but I went through there and searched and quickly realized I'm not going to any more game stores because my entire budget is blown in this one <laughs> game store. So at this game store, well, I guess let me go back. At Half Price Books, I had found the first <laughs> issue for a dollar of the X-Files magazine from the late 90s. I picked that up, and then I found a Vanity Fair from 1998 with the Star Wars cast. Um, it says, Star Wars, the Force is back at last. Exclusive first look photos of Phantom Menace. It was just a really cool time piece. That they had Jar Jar on there? Thank God, no. Oh, I'm, sure he's, I'm sure Oh, my fucking God. Here, check it out, buddy. You're going to love this. <laughs> Here's Dead Center. Not only is he on there, he's like the most prominent motherfucker. I thought you said he wasn't. I wish he wasn't. Oh. That's what I should have said. Right. That's beautiful. <laughs> um... Just look at his dumb face. <laughs> but yeah, so it's just a little weird time pieces that I liked. I love old magazines just even for the ads. Um, then so at uh, this game store, I picked up Time Splitters 2 on the Xbox. Crazy Taxi 3 High Roller. The Suffering. Cold Winter on the PS2. Second Sight on the GameCube. Uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer Chaos Bleeds for the Xbox. Um, Phantom Crash on the Xbox, Dreamfall on, on the Xbox, and then probably my favorite find, as I've been wanting to pick this up for a while and I figured I better grab it while prices are somewhat reasonable, uh, Aqua Team Hunger Force Zombie Ninja Pro-Am. Is that a game? Yeah, it was their game. I know, they made one. Yeah, man. Is it a size grower beat em up hug? Uh, I think it's a racer. Oh. I think. Uh, I guess so. Um, I well, said Pro-Am, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'd be racing then. I didn't process that until you just said I was racing. And then on the PS1, I picked up Chrono Cross, Vandal Hearts, and Fear Effect. Just to put that in perspective, those three games would probably be $100 normally. So I picked up the stack and was like, okay, this is it. I was like, Renee's going to be happy because we got to go home. I can't buy any more games. My total at that store was $250, man. It was my PS3 budget and my entire birthday bu budget for game buying. Birthday butt. <laughs> birthday butt. <laughs> and so I was like, that's it. I have to. But the way I thought about it, man, PS3s are going to make a comeback. They can't stay rare forever. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find one for a decent price. And these games uh, will not. The last time I passed on a PS3 was to buy a, a Sega Nomad for $90. And at the time, they were going for that. And I'm glad I did because right now Nomad, a working Sega Nomad, is sitting at ooh, Jesus Christ, three hundred dollars. I paid ninety bucks for it, and I was going back for should I buy a PS3 or a Nomad for like five years ago. Really fucking glad I bought that um, for that reason. So I said, you know what? Let me make that decision again. Fuck you, PS3. I'm going to buy these PS1 RPGs I've been looking at for a while. Um, yes, and I talked to the guy that works there. It's weird. It's a, a really cool store. He's got like a lot of really nice stuff. His back room's full of stuff. He's a young guy. I would say he's probably like maybe even a little younger than me. Oh, really? I don't. Yeah, it's weird. Dude's Where rocking like a at? museum. What's that? Where did you say it's at? Reynoldsburg. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, Reynoldsburg. Somewhere in that area. I can get you the, the place. It's cool. Okay. It's small, but he's got a lot of nice stuff. And maybe ask him, be like, can I look at your office? Can I just look in there real quick? Um, he had, like, factory-sealed Nintendo store promos, rental cases for everything. Um, it was a cool store. The guy in there helped me help me realize something. Like, it's okay to buy these things and not play them. Of course, because he's selling them. He's going to tell you that, right? But he just works there. And I would sit down a game and be like, I found this ridiculous game called Swagman on the PS1. This fucking looks, this title alone is great. Like, you ever played this, bro? What is this? 
He's like, man, I collect for the PS1 a lot, but I gotta be honest with you, man, not even a quarter of the games I own I've played, and I just have a massive collection. I was like, thank you so much for telling me that. That is so comforting, knowing that. And the game owner, the game store owner came out, he's like, yeah, dude, you just collect them, you don't even know. Put them on a shelf, brother. I was like, probably bad that they're the ones selling me games, uh-huh. so of course they're gonna say that, but, um, that's what we do. I just, like, looked at Renee, because she's right there. See? <laughs> See? Because she's always, she has this little song she likes to sing, because I'm like, whoa, I found this game, Renee. I must sound so nerdy. To her. I found this game, and it goes for four times the amount on eBay. I found it for $2, and it goes for 30 or 40 or uh, the NCAA 14 goes for over $100. She always sings, uh, she's like, you're never going to play it or never going to sell it. I'm like, yeah, I put it on a fucking shelf, bro. So it's comforting <laughs> that the people selling me my drug told me my drug's not bad. Yeah, I was going to say, that's like uh, <laughs> when you're <laughs> in rehab and everybody, no, it's okay to do it for a little bit. It's cool, dude. It's cool. <laughs> well, that guy says it's cool and that guy says it's cool. Uh, then Amazon jerked me around for a while. Ooh, oh. sexy. Uh, on Kingdoms of Analar, I pre-ordered that the second you could get the collector's edition for the re 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 Yeah. Um, and they told me, I was like, it's supposed to be delivered. What the hell's going on? You guys never charged me. And it's like, hey, are you sure? Like, it was this message. It felt like they were letting me down. Like, listen, it's sold out, but we'll let you know if it comes back in stock. Kind of emails. I'm like, yeah, just let me know. And before I came over here, I got an alert that it's actually on my way to my house. Oh, very nice. Yeah, so I, I get that. I'll be getting that. Uh, yeah, man, I blew my whole budget like in one store. I had like a, a sheet of like ten, eight stores, I was gonna go to and search, but um, that was probably a bad one to start at or a good one. I'm all over the place right now. I was able to take a nap so I could do this podcast. Yeah, there you go. There's destiny. Boom. Ten year plan. Yes, sir. That's that's all the pickups. That's it. What about you? That's it. <laughs> that's all we got, man. Yeah, that's all I got. How many um, is that? Can we do a count? Go for it. Should, I want to know which week was the most I've ever had. <laughs> Somebody should go back. Trevor, you love. I don't know why you listen. <laughs> Trevor, go back and rewatch all of them. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but oh, no, seriously, we had to do a shout out for Trevor. Oh uh, yeah, he even told me, and I was like, I promise I will if I remember, but I chance I'll forget. So go for it. Thank you, Trevor. You're an American hero. Um, I was working on an episode and it was broken, and he messaged me. I was like, yeah. "Yeah, this is broken." I was like, "Thank you, Trevor." So yeah, I noticed it, but I thought you were still working on it. I, like, ah, I didn't want to rush him. Then he texted me that, and he, I talked to Cody. I'm like, "Oh, all right." Yeah, so I appreciate, it, man. Thank you yeah. for listening to this, especially because you're not that into video games. Well, I think he's getting more into them. He's been texting me about games. Yeah. Um, also, I don't know if it was. An episode I did, or it was both of us, but he left a comment that said uh, we were actually the reason he got more into games, and um, he didn't really care about story games or wasn't really interested, and this changed it. Oh, that's exactly what I wanted to see. Even, oh, if it's just awesome. our, even if it's just somebody we know, it's still cool that somebody's more into games, and like, oh man, that sounds interesting, because what we talked about. Makes it all worth it, Trevor. That's right. Because when I met you, you were like, I was like, you play video games? You're like. <laughs> Uh, back, you backyard baseball for the Wii. <laughs> Trevor, it's uh, 2018. What the fuck? <laughs> it wasn't even good Wii games. It was like uh, Sudoku for the uh, GameCube. Sudoku on my PC. Um, so that makes me really happy, buddy. Um, I think it's one of the greatest, greatest mediums. And it might not seem like it on my end, but I think it, video games are your best bang f- uh Best bang for your buck, entertainment uh, wise. Much I love movie theaters or sporting events or anything. It definitely is. All of those things are over within hours usually, and some games are like that. But even then, they're usually at a lot lower cost. So definitely. Yeah. Um, did you count your games, or I don't care if you don't. I think it was thirty-two. Okay. Um, That's crazy in one week. I had this this amount right here pushed me over twelve hundred. <laughs> I think it's twelve fifty now or something. That's nuts. <laughs> Physical um, games too. Yeah. Not some guy in a group was posting, he's like, I've been counting my digital games, including my free iPhone games. <laughs> Bro, that does not count. I could download a thousand games off of Android right now. Before I get to all my media pickups, um 
that reminded me that was one thing I knew I was one of those. You know, I was talk about the Xbox. You kind of mentioned it. But uh, it makes sense. I'm not like, oh, they didn't do it. But it also is weird because they're making such a big deal of backwards compatibility and how everything will be playable. That um, if you get the S, unless you download your games or you go all digital, it's not going to be backwards compatible, which, like I said, is common sense because they have a disk drive. But it is weird to think about how much they're pushing that and how a lot of people are like, dude, but I can play my current games. When if you get that model, it's not going to, unless you're all digital. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of crazy to think about. Um, but my media pickups are nothing. Um, nothing. Nothing this week. Step your game up, dog. I know. But me, I'll end up getting that Mario game. We'll see. Especially on your way down to Kentucky, you could hit a few game stores. Um, actually, we are talking about that. I wanted to go to different game stores. Any that I looked up, like mom and pop ones, which all GameStop, and I just didn't stop at those. I'm not against it. I just, I was like, eh, that's all right. But any that I looked up weren't close, and then when we were actually there, like I said, we didn't really do much once we got there besides like some trails and the kayak, and most of the time just in the cabin. So I didn't even look at games once we were there, so the only chance I had was on the way there and the way back, which didn't give me much chance. Yeah, I just, uh, I'm a little dumb when it comes to that stuff, because sometimes I get a little bit more excited about the game stores than the trip itself. Oh, I, that's kind of how I am with food. And, really? I mean, I love trips, and you know how I am with hiking, not not even outdoor stuff, that's why. You've heard me say multiple times how I get so annoyed. People are like, oh, I'm an outdoor person. Or, oh, I don't like being indoors. And you know how much you're missing by boxing yourself off like that? I know some people just mean that they like those things more. Or they happen to do it. But some people literally are like, no, nah, I just, being indoors is a waste of time. Like, there's so much good in all of this that you're missing out no matter what you're doing. Yeah. But uh, so I was definitely looking forward to the kayaking and the hiking and all that. But no, the food was definitely a big motivator. I mean, I fucking planned the entire route there and back based off of food so <laughs> well i, I enjoy like doing that though too because it breaks up the trip yeah it's not endless driving yeah definitely um but the one thing i'll say about media pickups is that you said on your episode how you're not going to be ridiculed since i'm not there and i can be discouraged and there you're like <laughs> oh yeah 35 that's it um no i actually <laughs> I like making, I like playing it up and hamming it up, but I think it's, I just I think it's actually genuinely funny and interested what you get. I don't know, it doesn't actually bother me at all. Oh, I, no, I never thought that. Um, I also just think it's funny because I would like to add stuff, but I'm not going to buy it just to be able to, I know that's not what you do, but I'm not going to buy it just to be like, oh, I bought some this week, I'm only going to do it if it's something I actually want, so I would yeah. like it if some of these weeks I had something because then I'd have reason to buy something. Well, it's getting scary because, uh, I've said this a million times, but this is the time to buy a 360. And it's kind of the, the original Xbox doors are kind of closing, too. So I'm trying to grab a few more yeah. while there's some decent prices going on. Um, but, yeah, also, I never pay above price charting. I'm that idiot in game stores that's <laughs> scanning every game. Uh, I, you must me not being a big collector or doing that uh, or being like that. I still look up stuff like that. So, yeah. yeah, you got to, man, because that shit... Yeah. Some of these game stores, like, where did this price come from? No, definitely. Um, and I've got some weird looks because <laughs> I think they think that I'm reselling. Like, I'm looking for a yeah. way to make profit. And that's not it. It's just that I don't want to pay double for something I could have stayed home and bought on eBay for half the amount. Um, should we get into what we've been playing? Yeah. You want to start or you want me to? Sure, I can start. Um, of course, uh, Grounded. Halo Wars 2, I went through and played the expansion. Man, I think the expansion, the second expansion, the one that's not part of the of the thing. I used, do you remember you getting me like $30 for Xbox one time? Yeah, I don't remember what it was for, but I remember that. I finally used it on the, the expansion. I think it was like 12 bucks. Um, and you get four really good missions. I don't want to even talk about them because I want you to play them. Well, two things. Let's start with um, Grounded. So I saw, I knew that game was in early access. I didn't realize it was preview form and there wasn't even achievements. I still was yeah. looking at your list. That's a big bummer for me. It won't stop me from playing it, but that's a big motivator. I'm hoping also, it'll pop. Yeah, I was going to say, the one thing that I'd be okay with is if, it, if it's uh, retroactive. I just, you know how much I hate redoing games unless something I really enjoy, like Halo or something. So I'd hate making all that progress and then be like, oh, shit, I got to do this all over again. But uh, still, I'm curious to try it whenever you want to play yeah, that. Man. 
But uh, Halo Wars 2 is actually on my list, and I saw on your episode, you talked about on your episode beating it, right? Wasn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. so I went ahead and beat it as well, and um, I beat the, uh, what was it, Operation Spear Breaker, I think is the first DLC that comes mm-hmm. with it since we have Ultimate. And, um, well, first off, Halo Wars 2 is a lot of fun, and the cutscenes, like you said, are next level Fucking shit and TV I could show. yeah that's why I've always said I could watch a whole movie or TV show like that I still don't why Blur hasn't made a TV show yeah I'm with you. I don't know if it's just so expensive because it has to be fucking ridiculous to produce those or other otherwise other game companies would do that just commonly um but uh can I say something about Blur real quick yeah I hate to keep interrupting oh you're good I, if I was a game maker, I'd be almost afraid to use Blur because it almost overshadows your oh, game. Definitely, especially in, in uh, Halo first-person shooter, I don't think it'd be quite as bad, but in Halo Wars where it's already panned out and everything, doesn't by default, is kind of minimalizing graphics because you're not looking at a point of view like you do Halo. Mm-hmm. I feel like it stands out even more in a game like that because it goes from looking like the top-of-the-line CG to like an old computer game, yeah. which a uh, first-person shooter would still look noticeable, but... Yeah, like, oh, it's just kind of makes sense. The cutscene looks a little better than a game like that. I think it stands out even more. Um, but then I played the uh, Operation Spear Breaker. That was fun. I feel like it didn't add much story-wise, and was more about the gameplay. Which I think the gameplay is solid. But I'm not the biggest RTS fan, so the big motivator of me is the lore and the story of Halo. So that is kind of ah. Eh. It's solid, but didn't really do much, and it was only two missions, which kind of helped since there wasn't much substance there. But then you motivated me to beat it because I was kind of slacking on it, and then you motivated me to buy the uh, Awakening of Nightmare. Did you? Yeah, for it was 18 but I still think I think it's a good value. It was, uh, I think, four missions, and the average beat time is four to five hours, and the main game is eight hours, so yeah. that value on that still. Oh, yeah, I forgot I had like a $5 credit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I haven't finished that. I think I have two missions left on Nightmare, but uh, so, so I'll definitely finish it by next podcast, especially with all this time off. So, what do you know so far? I'm trying to think. Uh, I'm What's trying to think. The can't think of the last big moment to point out to you. I think what's the craziest moment for or craziest thing for me to think about is playing as a Covenant. I've never thought of them that way. Or not the Covenant. I'm sorry. The Vanish. Well, just I, I'm gonna refer to them as the Covenant because I don't know how to describe it. The bad, yeah, um, the bad aliens, but they're called the Vanish, not Stranded, not the Covenant. <laughs> but I have never thought about them that angle, and now I really like them. They're so I think it's better. I think that story is better than the main campaign. It sounded like you said from that anal. I know you said <laughs> angle, but I kind of <laughs> shake it. It's, um, it's so good because you're playing as two generals of uh, what is his name. Atriarchs. Atriarchs. Two of his generals that I think are brothers. It's just fucking amazing. If you don't want to play the games, go online and watch watch someone play them. Yeah. The storyline's so sick. I can't wait to finish the, the last battle. I love the final cutscene. I'm excited. I did think I like it a lot. Um, I feel like, I don't know, compared to the main game, especially about beating it, I like both of them. I don't know what I like more. But I had a feeling you would say that because you always like the more darker tone on the other side. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's definitely what this was. Um, it's weird because I had that same thing when I started up. I was like, oh, shit, this is nuts. I'm them. But it's weird because in Halo 2 you do that. And even in Halo Wars, you don't do it in the story. But I played a lot of uh, multiplayer in the original one. And I played as their squad leader. So I controlled them multiple times. And I was like, I don't know why that was so crazy to me, because I've literally done this exact thing in the first game. Mm-hmm. But it still did just kind of catch me off guard. I was like, this is crazy. And um, Oh, another thing I did was I ended up switching to easy, unfortunately. I was trying to beat it on normal. But, yeah, it's a fucking night and day for some reason. Oh, yeah. Normal. If I knew I was going to have this all the time off, I might have kept doing normal. But I tried to beat it when I was still working. So I was like, I want to be able to beat it and talk with them on podcasts. So I rushed through it on easy. And it was fucking breeze, but normal was like a real challenge, which yeah. is which is weird. I don't know. I'm not experienced with RTSs, but I beat Halo Wars on Legendary. Well, so I think for me it was creative, it was so simple. 
Creative Assembly. Assembly? Yeah. There are other games that I played a lot in high school. I had to always play Nazi as well. Oh. Yeah. I can't fucking play those things. I love that. It might be their design. Because like I said from the beginning, even when I first time I played this with Carrot, it just felt different to me. So maybe it's that. Because I beat Halo Wars Legendary. Also, I told you how me and Caradon got a few missions in. That's part of why I wanted to redo this and why I wanted to play it. We actually were only two missions from beating it on co-op, which kind of sucks. Oh, shit. But it also was nice just going through it all again and being not solo. But it sucks I was that close to being on co-op and having those achievements and finishing it like that. Um, but, yeah, I'm excited to beat that. And then it's actually motivated me to do some of multiplayer. And there's a lot of achievements I've been getting, which, you know, I love achievements. And being able to see the different squad leaders and operators and everything. And... It's weird. Sometimes you find games right away. Sometimes game modes just don't even have people. But the multiplayer, I think, is a real solid in it, too, if you haven't really? played it. I yeah. haven't. I'm kind of afraid to. Yeah. Um, in Halo Wars, the original one, I actually got not amazing at it because I could tell when I when I have people that really knew what they were doing, I was fucking done for. But in the original Halo Wars, I could actually compete against most people pretty well, even not, not being an RTS player. This one... Um, for one, I'm having a hard time finding people, like I said, in some of them. And then the other thing, I didn't think I'd be very good. So I've mainly done one where you're with teams, which makes it easier because then they can kind of support me. Or even better, they have ones where you go with real people against AI. So it's kind of just like a firefight, and they literally have firefight modes in this. All that with the expansion, right? Yeah. Um, and some of them you can, well, all of them probably, you can do private. So we could even just hang out and play together yeah, and get some that. achievements and have some fun with it. Because I think it's a real solid. This is a game I would have sunk hundreds of hours in middle school. Yeah. I had a real bad problem with Empires. <laughs> I was addicted. And then ninth grade, I found Rome Total War, which is Creative mm -hmm. Assembly. Um, huge addiction to those fucking games. Uh, so I love RTSs. Oh, my God. Um, I do also think it's fucking crazy, like you said last week, how in... Well, I was about to use the word integral. Every time you said integral, I thought of a... Uh, or te Yeah, I was like, God, stop Tagered saying farms. it. <laughs> Every time. I just, oh, my God. Um, but it is nuts how much it ties together. Um, I actually think that's cool and I don't have an issue with it because I think, unfortunately, the majority of people that play Halo don't play campaign, and even a lot of people play campaign. No, like, base storyline, how Master Chief saves a day. So I don't feel like you need to know that stuff if that's the majority of people are going to be like that. But I think it's actually cool that there is so much of these things that are like ancillary stories that connect to it and make it bigger and fill it in more. I do think it's nuts that they kind of hide it wet, not hide it, because it's free for every well, Game Pass, and anybody can buy it. But uh, it is way more niche, so it is crazy it's like tucked away in that. But... I feel like a lot of people complain for that little reason. Like, I just want to play a game and beat it. I don't need to read books and do all this stuff. But I think it's fair to a point. But like I said, when you can play the main game and the base storylines, really all you need is Master Chief saves a day and that's good enough for you, then that's good enough for most people. And then for the people like us that want all this backstory and want the full story, I feel like it's cool that they do these other projects that you can play to fill in the gaps and make it more of a thing. Yeah. <laughs> It makes me like wonder what I'm missing on the comics and books too. Yeah. Um, but I kind of took over your what you've been playing because I thought I might as well talk back and forth with you on Halo Wars. No, man. Do you have anything else? Well, it's cool too. I, this is, might be a little bit of a spoiler, so maybe check out for a second if you're playing, plan on playing the Halo Wars two um, expansion to know what happened to the uh, Covenant's capital city. Oh yeah. And to know, like, oh, I was on there when watching the elites fight each other, mm -hmm. the two armies, and to like know, like, motherfucker, don't open that, <laughs> and you know, like, shit, like, dude, are you serious? Like, I closed that a few games ago, like, Cortana. I think Cortana crashed it, maybe. I think so. I can't remember, and I think sealed it. I can't remember, but yeah, man, I'm excited. It is kind of weird. This so integral to uh, integrity, <laughs> to uh, the storyline. Yeah, it is, and I get that criticism to a point, but I said I think it's cool that they're willing to take that risk, and I said I feel like it shouldn't really be a risk because ninety percent of people that play Halo aren't going to care about that anyways, unfortunately. Yeah. So 
You wonder if they'll well. do a summary. I could see that, yeah. A quick summary. Um, and the flood coming back, that was... Uh, yeah, man. I've been waiting for that. Yeah, I thought you'd like that. I didn't know it was going to happen, obviously, which I'm glad I didn't because kind of remind me of Halo 1 where nobody saw it oh, coming. Jesus Christ, I almost dropped a crazy spoiler, but I just now remembered you did not complete the expansion. Yeah, almost there. Yeah, oh my God. But yeah, dude, ah, that final cut scene, man. I, I liked it so much when I went back on YouTube and watched it again. That's what I was thinking about doing with some of them. It's cool. You been playing anything else, though? Uh, I downloaded Bleeding Edge, waiting for that to install. I want to play that before it's too dead. <laughs> um, God, there's something mixed in there. Do you remember us playing that game at PAX? Uh, the rhythm game of the car? The car that's shooting zombies? I don't know if I played it. Did I, I know what you're talking about? Cause I, I remember that, but I don't know if I actually played it. Yeah, it must have been just me. but um, Maybe I did, though. Oh, wait, no. You're on, like, a, a moving... Yeah. It's like a highway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I like that. I thought it was cool. So it's on Game Pass. Oh, is it really? Yeah, so I was like, <coughs> of course. Um, let me see if I find the name so I can give this a proper shout-out here. Um, Double Kick Heroes. And those guys were really nice, and I saw it pop up there, and I was like, that was the one I walked away. That and that volleyball... Uh, volley... Was it a volleyball game? And that rhythm game were the two I walked away from PAX indie-wise that I was like, man, I want to check those out. I've been playing it. I have a Guitar Hero for the Xbox One, but I do not have the dongle, so I could not use that. But I've been playing with the controller, and it's pretty good, man. I have the dongle if you want to borrow it. Do you really? Yeah, you're talking about the new Guitar Hero? Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to borrow it, you can. Those are... I don't even know if I want to take that. Those are so fucking rare. Oh, I know. I What the fuck? I remember telling you about how um, I saw tons of them and almost grabbed them, and even not even to resell or anything. I was like, I like to have extra guitars so two people can play. Yeah. And right after that, when all that happened, I was like, oh, yeah. shit. Do you remember, like, was it US all, like, Black Friday? There was something crazy cheap? Yeah. $5, I think, for just a guitar. Yes, dude. What the fuck? Right now, eBay. Unbox. Two guitars. Two dongles. 200 bucks. Uh-huh. Easy. So stupid. I found a game store here that had the full set uh, rock band guitars, drums, everything for Xbox One. He's like, man, I'm having a hard time finding these full sets. He's like, I'll let it go to you for like 600. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's from like <laughs> fucking uh-huh. half of what my car's worth. So, no, thank you. <laughs> I'd much rather spend that over six months on yeah. a bunch of games. So, yeah, it's weird. Uh, it's kind of upsetting because that's kind of how it packs where they had all of the guitars set up and yeah. And at that time there was a surplus of them, so I didn't think we'd have to worry about it. But now it's asinine. Um, but yeah, that's I thought it was five bucks. I didn't want to say that because like that's an asinine price. I'm pretty sure. But yeah, I remember it being five as well. Because for five bucks you're like, why not? Yeah. Now you wish you would have fucking grabbed all mm-hmm. of them. I think they're done, man. I don't think they're making any more of those anytime soon. No. Yeah, definitely not soon. I could definitely see in years from now another one. Like I said, I feel like everybody was thought there would never be another Guitar Hero when that one was made. So I definitely think I will come back. But yeah, I don't think it'll be anytime soon. Yeah. So that's all I've been playing, man. That's all. Gotcha. Um, I've had two weeks to work with and time off, so I got a lot more, obviously. Um, play a little bit more of The Last of Us Part Two. That's definitely a game we're going to try and finish with having all this time because I've taken too long and somehow I had not had anything spoiled yet. So, going to get through that. Um, play a little bit more Fall Guys. Still liking it. Like I said, I, I've never been addicted like a lot of people got. So, to me, it's a fun game to play for a while. Sometimes I do get stuck like a couple hours playing and have a lot of fun. But I feel like a lot of people are going to wear themselves out and then blame the game for it instead of realizing that they got addicted and it's not really the game's fault because... There's only so much content in a $20 game. Um, or free. Yeah. And then Halo Wars, like I said. Um, and then, so, last night, me and Derek, the bearded guy on Twitch. Um, R.I.P. Rainbow we, TV. <laughs> we, uh, we're doing a normal thing, like me and you and everybody does when they get on live. And there's like, well, what should we play? And kind of just debating everything. 
and we were just playing random games on Game Pass, and oh, let's try this. And we went to play Battle Toads, and it's not online co-op; it's only couch co-op. Like, what the fuck? Throwback. Yes, I thought it was awesome to have couch co-op. I just couldn't believe they didn't have online as an option. That's kind of threw me off. So we didn't end up playing that. I do think I like that game. I'm worried about how hard it is because I can't do games like that. And like you said, kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because if people love that game, would be pissed. But I guess not damned if you do, damned if you don't in that situation. Because I just wouldn't play if it's that hard. And that makes sense if it's hard. I just, for me, I hope it would be a little a challenging, but not impossible. I beat the arcade version thanks to the Rare Replay and that fucking rewind option yeah. and Endless Revives. But yeah. Um, there were some hard games. Yeah. But, so then we moved on to, I've heard a lot about this game, but I never played it. Uh, Man of Madon, the Dark Picture Anthology. Have you heard of that? I've heard it a lot. I'm so surprised you haven't. It sounds so familiar. I feel like I'm podcast. It's uh, super massive, made it, the people made it until dawn. Man of Madon. Okay. Is it Xbox or a PS4 thing? Well, until Dawn was, Man of Madon came out and, I don't know about everything, but yeah, Xbox, PlayStation, Steam, I think. Is it good? It's fucking awesome. Um, so, this wasn't quite Edith Finch level and definitely not even close as far as, like, the emotional impact or anything like that. Uh-huh. But in a way that, like, something I'd heard of and never, really tried and just, like, eh, let's try this out. And... I just got fucking fucking hooked and loved it. <laughs> it's uh, it's like nothing I've ever played before. There's aspects that are similar, and some of them even sound like insults. And the game is a little rough around the edges, so there is actual issues with it. But it does so much different and so much right that it's definitely worth playing. So it's a a survival horror of what they call it, but um, it's kind of set up like a horror movie. I've heard until dawn is still is like this even more extreme. I'll get back to Until Dawn, but I haven't played that yet. Um, but there's three different modes. There's a solo story, there's the connected story, which we play co-op with somebody, or there's movie night, which is where you play one controller but four people on the same couch, and the game prompts when to pass the controller, and you all connect in this world together, which sounds awesome as well. That's sick. Yeah, but... What makes it so different is when you're... I've only done a connected story with Derek, but we finished it last night. That's another nice thing. It was like four and a half hours, so it's kind of like you just finish in that way where it's not fucking your whole life's committed to it like a lot of games are now. But at first, it definitely is janky and rough around the edges. The walking mechanics are fucking horrendous. It's like heavy rain or early Resident Evil. Oh, God. Yeah, that kind of movement. Out of the, the tank shit? Yeah. It's not quite as bad, so maybe Heavy Rain's a little better in comparison, but it's pretty fucking rough. But luckily, the more you get into it, the less you're walking around, and you kind of get used to the terrible walking, and it doesn't get better. You just Your mind gets a little more used to it. Like Derek said, he didn't bother him at all by the end. I still noticed it, but it wasn't brain adapted a little. Do you feel like it added to it? Because I feel like the original Resident Evil, it's like, holy shit, like you, it brings some fear because it kind of throws you off. No, I... If it was intentional, I would not design a game like that. I yeah. thought it definitely took me out of it more. And there's a lot of weird things like that that it does so much right, but then there's things that take you out of it. But I think Supermassive is relatively big, so I don't think it's like a small developer thing or publisher thing. Um, like there's a lot of button prompts you have to press and stuff, and the button prompts will randomly get stuck on your screen and float with you as you're walking. Which really takes you out of this really <laughs> cool horror vibe. <laughs> Press A! Uh huh. And then there's potentially g- game breaking ones that happened. Like, uh, I sunk into the level one of the times. <laughs> and Derek was like, Yeah, there's no button prompts. Like, yeah, all these are there, but I can't do it. And I'm stuck in this room. And I was like, Oh shit. And then we backed out of the game, came back in, and it worked. But there's uh, just stuff like that that kind of pulls you out of it. Let's see if I'm black over there. Uh oh. Oh, the PS3 turned on. Oh, God damn it, that every time. Is it like. Time? 
Oh. Screen went black. You scared the shit out of me, though. So you're looking behind me, and then you're like... I quickly turned. Oh, God. I hope so. Oh. Still recording. Thank God. You scared me. What the... I'll have to... I want to play back and watch like just that section of me just being petrified. Yeah, perfect time to talk about horror games. <laughs> so, yeah, where I left off was that kind of stuff pulls you out of it. But the shit it does right, it does so right and stuff like that I've never seen before. So, the best way to describe the gameplay, which sounds like an insult and it kind of is, is like a telltale game. But not exactly. There's definitely more control and movement. But it's kind of like that, where that's definitely secondary and the story is progressing. Even to the point where uh, the frame rate is another thing that can affect it. It can just fucking drop out of nowhere. And you know I'm not somebody who notices frame rates unless it's yeah. real noticeable. I'm the same way. Yeah. And Telltale, it's not to... I don't know if you play Telltale games. Do you know I love them? Minecraft. The one I've played is Minecraft. Did I have uh, the... I don't think so. I played it pretty really? late, though. It might have. Yeah, I thought it was their engine had the issue because every Telltale game, it was just fucking like, the game was just chopping all along the whole time. Maybe it did. I'm trying to think back. This isn't like that. This is like it runs pretty smooth for the most part, but then when it happens, you're like, oh, shit, and you (laughs) notice it. But um, so I feel like there's everything that kind of is messed up with it. But what it does right is it's a survival horror game, like I said, and it's uh, sounds like stuff they could fix, though. Um, I would think so. I think this game's been out for a little bit, but um, I don't know. They this game's weird. It's uh, they use motion capture on everybody, and they use real actors. Like um, I think Sean Ashmore is the biggest one in this. He was uh, he was also in Control. If you recognize his face, he's a real actor though. Like uh, he was in X Men movies. He's been in some bigger stuff. And uh, everybody else, I didn't recognize anybody else, but they're all actual actors. I like, have to go to their IMDb. And uh, so it's cool that they get all of them because it gives more realism to it and they motion capture it. But then there is the awkwardness and the things kind of take you out of it of uh, you're making every decision. Yeah, Night Trap. What's that? Night Trap, the. Uh, this was it? It's like a CD game, maybe. Oh, okay. That they had so much fucking mo- uh, motion capture in this. Oh. Not motion. Yeah, it'd be motion capture, maybe. What do they call those? Was like real video. Oh, you're talking about FMV? Is yeah. That, yeah. No, motion capture is where they like actually. Little balls. Yeah. So everything that happens is there. Real movements, and so it seems yeah. a lot more realistic. And the graphics aren't amazing, but they're they're good enough. But Remember when uh, Rockstar took it too far and motion captured way too much of someone's face? Yeah. It's fucking great. Um, but it gets, it kind of pulls you out because you're making the decisions. So even though it is in real time and like their face looks realistic and the movement is, they'll be like, yeah, I thought he was dead over there. And then Derek, I'll be waiting on Derek's character to say something. So. He'd be picking his options, and then he'd be like, yeah, I thought that too. <laughs> and I mean, I get why the game has to do that, and it makes sense because the game would literally not work like that. You got to give – it It doesn't give you much time to think either. You're like, oh, shit, shit, what, what should I do? So if it gave you any more – or any less time, the game wouldn't even function. So I get it. It just kind of pulls you out of something that <laughs> is so se- – or should be so seamless. But where it gets so crazy and – where we started getting more hooked into it because they're like, ah, I don't know, and those things kind of were pulling us out, is the survival horror gets um, so crazy because you have the four players, and, well, it's two players, but you have four characters in your squad, I guess, um, and it'll switch the perspective, so I was like the older brother, and Derek was the little brother. Hot. And then there was a girlfriend, and then another guy, and then... So I was uh, the guy, and I was like, wait, Derek, where are you? And he was like, uh, I'm downstairs. And then he was seeing something different than I was. Holy shit. And it was 
stuff like that we were just kind of like figuring out mechanics but without spoiling too much it messes with you a lot in that way and i've never seen a game do that like um i was like oh shit there's a dead body down here and there's a where i'm up what do you mean i'm on the boat I was <laughs> like, wait what i'm underneath the water diving <laughs> really <laughs> yeah and then there's things that really fuck with you like uh he was like oh shit shit there's a monster and i was like wait wh- who aren't you looking at me no, dude, there's a fucking monster. Are you not the black dude? <laughs> no, I am. There's a giant monster. And I was like, wait, I think that's me. And he was seeing me as a monster. Holy but shit. But on my screen, I knew it was him. So he was about to fucking kill me. That's fucking and awesome. I was like, yeah, I was like, I've never seen this before. And the game, um, there is some jump scares and the, the vibe and atmosphere definitely can get <laughs> creepy. <laughs> so, holy shit, there's a monster. Where, where, where? Uh, yeah. I fucking realize it's you. Yeah, but, and he was like, shoot, if you didn't say something, I was definitely going to stab you. And I was like, yeah. So it messed with you so much. Like I said, the game itself oh, in a normal game does a good job at the atmosphere and the vibes and everything and some jump scares. But that kind of stuff I've never seen before. And uh, then there's a whole cool, interesting story. And there can be 15 possible endings Holy based shit. off what you did. So. Um, a lot of issues with Telltale games and issues like that, or games like that, is that you're making decisions, but then you realize that a lot of them are going to end the same. These are literally, you can have, these are an achievement, so it's not a spoiler. You can save uh, save everybody, you can kill everybody, you can have an ending where literally everybody dies. Wow. And there's 15 endings, and all this is so fucking cool. I'm digging that. Yeah. Um, sold me on it. It's Game Pass? Yeah, it's Game Pass. Um, this is a game I would have been perfectly okay buying. Obviously, I'm not saying you should because you can get it for a Game Pass, but that's how good it is. I fucking, I'm all over it. And uh, I wish so bad we would have streamed it. He's like, you should stream it. And I was like, oh, that's all right. I just want to have fun with you. I don't want to worry about streaming and all that. But, and actually, it wouldn't have worked because he couldn't stream. But I thought this would have been so cool to have two different angles of streaming, cause especially as well as messing with us. And we could still actually even do it and not have it be ruined and fake. Like, oh, what's that? Because the outcome can literally be different. So next time, that might not be happening. And that's so crazy to me that we could play it again and actually still be genuinely scared and confused and trying to figure out, like, the puzzle of how to save everybody. I'm digging that. So even if you want to do that, I'm down again. Yeah. I, th- I think it'd be fun single player, and it might be a little... Well, I don't know if it'd be more scary because the atmosphere and that kind of stuff be more scary. But like I said, we definitely were fucking with each other and not even like trying to to make it more scary. <laughs> they definitely mess with it. But yeah, it's called a dark picture anthology because they're going to make multiple games in a seri- series. And the next one's called Last Hope, announced for October 30th. Oh, well, that's soon. Yeah, so I'm super excited. This game, Man of Madonna, I think has been out for a bit, so it makes sense. So it's not like rushed or anything. I just am late to it. But, um, again, this has, like, known actors in it. Um, the dude from, uh, what's, God, I'm blanking. But there's another known actor in it. And uh, I'm so excited this is, like, a series thing because it hooked me so much. And, like I said, the original creators or their original game was Until Dawn, which was a PS4 exclusive, which sounds similar to this. It's only single player, which is a bummer. But... That one I heard is actually even better, which uh, I was always curious because I heard good things about it. Oh, yeah. But now I'm fucking, I'm all over that. And, Isn't uh, there an Unreal Shooter they made, too? Before yeah, that series? was um, Not this, Rush of, right. I don't know if it was not meant to look that up. It was Rush of Blood, and it's fun for what it is, but yeah, this these are like really story-based. And this, I played that with you. Yeah, it, and it was, it's really cool. It's a rail shooter with VR that looks, works very well, but yeah, it's nothing. It's like a whole different experience. It shouldn't even have that name. I think a lot of people are complaining about that where there are fans of Until Dawn. They're like, don't even, why are you naming it this? Yeah, that's there a good be, point. Yeah, it should be something completely separate. Um, but Until Dawn actually has like big name actors. It has uh, Hayden Panettiere in it. It has uh, Rami Malek, the dude that played uh, uh, Freddie Mercury. So, this game, like I said, has known actors, the dark pictures, but I'm curious to play a game like that where it's like major actors and uh, see how that is, especially since apparently it's better than this. I, uh, I have to get until dawn now. And um, 
I like that the last hope is coming out October 30th. That would be a little cooler if it was a couple weeks sooner because that would be perfect for Halloween. Exactly. But but I think Halloween's going to be weird this year. Yeah, that's true. Maybe we could, be, instead of having a Halloween party, maybe we'll get on Xbox Live and get, like, with four people? Um, The Man of Madonna is only two people. I don't know. We could, though, uh, do it in person, do the movie night, which yeah. is four people where you pass control, which that's I think sick. would... I think it's a whole different experience, so I'd be curious to see what that is. Yeah. I still, uh, as long as not everybody else too scared, which is funny until the Halloween. I still want to do a Halloween party, though. Because I feel like everything about Halloween is going to be weird and kind of canceled. So it'd be nice to have a little bit of normalcy. But I'm not against doing that as well. Um, Sounds good. And then we also played World War Z, which is a game I've been curious about since it came out. Because I love Left 4 Dead. Um. He was pretty down on it, so you don't want to play this. And it's definitely not Left 4 Dead quality. It's a complete rip off of it for sure in the way that I feel like they would admit it. And I feel like it makes sense because for some reason they want to abandon Left 4 Dead. But for one, it's third-person shooter, which I think takes away from a lot of the scariness because you can oh, see yeah. stuff around you. I also generally like first-person shooters more. And there's definitely a lot of the Valve polish or Turtle Rock, whatever you want to call it, that's missing in this. It almost feels like a budget version of Left 4 Dead. It is fun. We had fun with it, and um, a lot of the environments are cooler, are cool, and some are even cooler than Left 4 Dead. Like the initial level is New York, and you know, that's a perfect setting. And they do the. I'm not a big fan of World War Z. I was really looking forward to the movie. I don't know how you feel about it. Okay. Yeah, that's how I felt. I mean, it's terrible, but I was so excited. I was like, ah. What I read from the book was like, why the fuck did you not go that route? That's what I've heard. Um, they do the cool thing that. The movie's known for though where the zombies pile on each oh, other yeah. and that's really cool especially we got like a rocket can just fucking blow them away and just see them <laughs> yeah it's so cool <laughs> so there is interesting stuff with it and we definitely had fun this is another game god that, dude you just got my dick so hard for game pass just sitting here talking it's so nice to sit down and know everyone's got those games uh-huh oh i know Especially when it's games like that, when you play together, that's even better. Pick up and go. Like, you don't, oh, I spent 20 bucks on this. I better get some of the entertainment out of you. Like, fuck it. I said it was a no-brainer. Now that EA plays a part of it, you have to be fucking psycho not to do it. Um, but this game is another game that seems very unbalanced. Normal, we couldn't even get past the first chapter of the first episode. And then easy, we finished the uh, entire episode in the one night. And not one night, in like an hour and a half, whatever. But it was fun. It's definitely a little janky and not as polished, but for what it is, it's fun. It's just, I wish there was somebody like Val that made it, because I think it, a few extra things can make it like a super special game. Um, played a little bit more MCC, of course. Played a little Warzone with a couple people. Um, and we finally started building our Labo. We finished the house and the RC, the RC car, and... I told you I got a Labo for Danielle because I was never really interested in it. And it was way too expensive. I got it on sale, but it's way too expensive when it came out. Or still is out. Um, but yeah, the tech in this is fucking crazy. The build of quality of it is super impressive. And uh, did you see how you build it or you just saw it once it was done? Uh, I saw it once it was done. How like heavy duty it was. The building process is so fucking streamlined and so cool. It definitely, you still need an adult. I think a kid would be confused because you need somebody controlling it and then somebody building it. I think it's way easier two people instead of trying to like use a Joy-Con and then build it. I think two people is perfect, but a kid I think would have a little bit of issue with it. But um, it makes it something that should be so confusing, so simple. And I feel like this is something like the master Lego sets could thrive off of. When you're like, I don't fucking, this picture looks like nonsense. They just show you like part by part. It's almost like impossible to mess it up if you know what you're doing. And it's just so cool seeing how that's done. And then once you build this stuff, both the things we built don't have much use yet. But I heard it's that's kind of how some of the stuff is. Like some stuff is really like true gamey stuff. And there's kind of just like playful, silly things, which makes sense because it is kind of aimed towards kids. So like the house seemed kind of like a, um, what do you call it? Kamik like Gamakachi or whatever what the fuck was that? Gamakachi? Yeah. Kind of just seems like one of those things where you kind of like playing with a pet and like messing with them and stuff. But the tech you're doing is fucking cool and I feel like that's aimed towards kids. And if I was a kid, 
it fucking blew my mind. And even though this is kind of just dumb, pointless shit where, like, you're feeding him or having him run around, the fact that you're doing it with all these fucking pieces of cardboard <laughs> and that's actually accurately doing it. It's not like, oh, I kind of twisted and it moved a little. It's, like, dead on. Yeah. It's so crazy. People always complain, like, Switch's strong point is first party, but their first party is just... Oh, yeah. Dude, when's the last time you heard, like, a first party game not going well? Like, yeah. bad. Like, when something's mediocre for Nintendo, people will throw a fucking fit. They just have such a high quality, or standard of quality. Which is crazy, because they also seem to be the ones that delay the least out of the major companies, yeah. so... The Japanese work culture. Yeah. Um, but even, like, the RC car, it was so fucking cool just moving out around the room. Like, this is so dumb, but then... It has a uses the IR camera or the sensor in the controller, and gives you a um, green video, and you can see what um, through the camera. It's not like good enough to see something, but I'm sure kids, especially the, what that aimed at, try and be creepy with it. But um, Buckeye fucking hated it every time I moved it. He, oh, it was fucking great. He lo- well, Run. he did not love it. Yeah, well, he's laying on Danielle's lap, and then time man start moving. Like, <laughs> and then try and like climb up on top of her and get away. Oh. And I kept doing the thing where I'd crash off the table and hit him, and he'd fucking just like jump three feet in the air. <laughs> um, so I'm excited to build more, especially because I said I've heard some are like that, where it kind of just like, oh, that was cool for a second, and the others are like a a true game. They uh, definitely are a commitment. The RC car only took ten minutes, so that was super nice. But the house took an hour and a half. And like I said, we're two grown adults, so that's why I think aiming it towards kids, unless you're going to have an adult with them, I think it's a, a little harder. But um, Did you get the steering wheel? Is that part of the variety kit? I don't know. We got the variety kit, which is the initial. It's like six different things, and then the robot one. I was showing that jet pack. I think if I remember correctly, it had a shifter that had a rubber band in it, so it actually... That might like be one of the worst ones. In there. Yeah. These things, uh, as a collector, though, these are not going to last long, I don't think. Yeah. I can see That's... this thing being crazy rare in the future. Oh, like that? You meant, I thought you meant as far as the value? Or is that what you, I mean, uh, because they're so fragile, as I mean? Yeah, I think so. That's what I was wondering. I was like, I don't even know. Once we're done building it, I don't know where the fuck we're going to put all these things. Because yeah. they're going to get crushed. And this, I think that shit's going to get tossed in the fucking trash by moms a lot, too. Yeah. So it's one of those things I've gone back and forth like, man, I just want to get a complete set. Yeah, it's way, I've seen a couple times where I do the $20 sales, and I think, especially after experiencing myself, like I said, I got it for her. I was even like, I don't even know if I'm going to like this, but it'd be an excuse to play games with her. But I don't know, so this is super interesting. And $20, I think it's hard to not do it just to see what it's like. Yeah. Um, and then besides that, I uh, was streaming some games. I streamed uh, DJ Hero. I was um, there for that. Yeah, did you like it, man? Yeah, oh yeah. Got that <laughs> fucking music line up. <laughs> I didn't see a single song in there. Like, That'd be fun to play. Um, No, it's fucking great. DJ Hero's awesome. <laughs> There's, For some reason, I don't even like a lot of music, but for some reason, I was hamming it up, obviously, to be stupid. But for some reason, when I'm by myself, I fucking, I'm feeling that music, even though I don't like most of it. I'm like, <laughs> this, this is so great. And I love DJ Hero. That's something that will probably never come back, sadly. Yeah. Um, and then streamed another game, Madden, probably like a week and a half ago now. Week three, I beat the undefeated Ravens, so I'm 2-1. and one. And then, I don't know if you joined this stream at all yet. I've been streaming Alien Isolation. I did for a second, but I don't want some spoilers. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. But I won't give anything spoiler-ish. Um, but yeah, I plan on, unless I hate the game, which I'm not now, there's definitely some issues with it. Another game where I definitely notice a frame rate fucking chugging at times. And I said it to Derek, and he's more of a frame rate snob. Frame rate snob. And he's like, oh yeah, everybody online, you can Google it. People will say the game's unplayable. So I don't know if that's him being the way he is, or if that's true, because I've heard fucking amazing things about this game. Yeah. So if that's true, that'd be confusing. I but then I... Thing when that came out. Yeah, but then I have seen... Like myself, I've seen it, so it definitely is noticeable at times. And there's definitely, um, it's a game that doesn't direct you very well. And I know a lot of people like that, especially in horror. But I feel like it's, I don't like those games usually. And also on top of that, I feel like it's not just like, oh, figure out what you do. I feel like it's kind of bad at directing what to do. But 
I think it's definitely nailing the vibes and the atmosphere of Alien, which I think is the most important thing and the most telling thing so far. So I only play a few hours in a game like that. Can't really tell what the gameplay is like and what all the mechanics are like yet. So those things are the things that are sticking out the most to me. And I feel like those are very important, being a fan of Alien. Maybe why that stands out so well. They just never had a good game. Yeah. They seem to always get shit on. That was yeah. like the first one where people seem to, you know, enjoy it. Um, I hate to step back, but you ever seen the DJ Hero Collector's Edition? Oh, uh, yeah, the table. The Jay-Z edition or something they called it? Yeah, I really wanted one of those. I did, too, because uh, for the dumbness like that, I wish I had a table for sure, but also playing it does feel more natural just to stand and like have a table like that than kind of like to sit at a, a ta- like sit down in a chair and play it feels a little awkward or like trying to put it on your lap and like twisting off of you so no that was one I actually genuinely wanted I think it was the Eminem Jay-Z edition or something like yeah. that yeah um but we'll see what uh the rest of this week has like I said I definitely need to focus more on getting things done and not just playing games Me and too, man. doing movies but <laughs> Don't get to do a lot of that, so I'm trying to take advantage of it, and I want to try and finish The Last of Us and do some of these things. I, like I said, I made progress with Halo Wars and did some of these things. I also haven't streamed much lately again, which I definitely want to do, and try and make Alien a more consistent thing, and hopefully find more interest in it. Yeah, for sure. Um, what have you been watching? So I got a whole list there, too, again. Um, i trying to think movie-wise, anything besides what I watched tonight. Here. I'm waiting for my computer to tell me we're out of uh, memory space. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be in close. <laughs> Holy shit, I didn't think about that. Um, look up here. Let me find it. Thing is taking forever to open. This is a movie I, was, uh, I didn't want to watch right away because I was like, I want to save this for something special. Um, so my birthday, I said, why the fuck not? I watched it right before coming over here. Uh, it's amazing. Um, I rented it on Amazon and as soon as it was over, I quickly ordered the Blu-ray. Um, so I definitely don't watch it with you or let you borrow it. It's called, uh, Jasper Mall. And it was a Facebook ad that got me. I don't know if it was like, what? I was watching so much fucking dead mall videos on YouTube or what. Um, uh, I love documentaries. <laughs> I love uh, dead malls. I love awkward people. Oh I like Tiger King. And honestly, this has a little bit of everything. It's about a dead mall in Alabama. Oh, Jesus. And it's amazing, Casey. It's so you get the terrible it. accents everywhere? Yeah. But the cinematography, man, there's an, at the end, he kind of goes around and collects some shots. It's, like, fuck. it's just a beautiful movie. No, I would me against watching it. And there's the head of security is also like the head maintenance man and everything. And he's definitely your, he actually ran a, a roadside zoo, just like Tiger King, yeah. that got ran out of business because of activists. Um... I don't know the story behind that, but I don't know. Uh, God, it's so good, man. I just feel very nostalgic to malls because I feel like it was, a, I don't know if you guys did this too. Is it something you did on the weekends where it was like, you didn't know what to do. You can watch a movie and go to yeah, a mall. Definitely. You got your haircuts there. You, I don't think I ever did that. Really? Yeah. School supplies. So. Uh, my first Chinese food was at, a, at, the, at our mall. Never did that either. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the malls were much more vibrant. There were so much more sh- fucking malls, cool mall stores. Yeah. KB Toys. It's just, if anything was going on for us anyways, it was the mall and New Philadelphia, New Town Mall. And then if we were really, really popping, like we were on school break or something, my parents said, we go up to Canton, go up to the Canton uh, Belden Village Mall. Um, both of those malls still exist, but they're dead as fuck, man. It's depressing. Malls seem to be filled with a lot of those stupid, like, mom-and-pop shops that you're like, how do you make money here? <laughs> um, yeah, man, once it comes in the Blu-ray, it says it's going to take a while, because I'm sure it's coming, it's a super indie film. Yeah. 
So I'm sure it's coming from the guy that made it instead of get here in 10 days, the generic Amazon thing. But yeah, whenever I get it, we'll definitely, I definitely want to watch it again. Okay. It's really fucking good. Uh, it's definitely been my favorite movie of the year so far. I haven't watched shit, but yeah. so far that's my movie of 2020. Um, so go watch it. Jasper Mall. You can rent it, buy it, support it. It's an indie film. So, you know, the money's just going to the guy. So good. Loved it. Yeah. That's it. That's it, man. Um, so, two Saturdays ago, I watched The Crew versus FC Cincinnati with um, Danielle, my little sister, and Ryan. There was a 0-0 a zero, zero game, the most boring score in soccer. <laughs> Um, and that should not exist. I know soccer fans think it's criminal to say, but and say that you're not a soccer fan if you say that. But I'm a lifelong hockey fan, and hockey used to have ties, and I said the same thing. And they got rid of ties, and it's 100 times more interesting. So soccer needs to fucking get rid of ties. <laughs> but the nice thing is, I mean, Cincinnati still literally never beat us in the MLS. So, <laughs> And then this last Sunday, we went to a drive-in in uh, Polaris. With, uh, stand up again, sorry. Oh, you're good. With Ryan to watch the crew play FC Cincinnati again, and they beat them three to nothing. So again, Cincinnati has never beat the crew. Hello, poor rat. Um, Hello, everybody. It's second the year. Nice to meet you. Want to sit down? Uh, this is your favorite uh, your TV show. Um, and I, that clip in the video. <laughs> I told you uh, before we started this, I returned to our old work for the first time in over a year. Oh, that's what I was waiting for the story. And Trevor, and somehow neither of them have ever seen Inception. I almost spoiled it because I thought everybody seen that. I haven't seen it either. Really? Yeah. That is fucking shocking. I thought you of all people would have been... It got spoiled for me, though. Oh, that's yeah, that's why I'm glad they said something because I would have... That's just everybody seen it, so I would have just talked normally. I thought we were all seeing it again to see it again. Uh, somebody also, at the same time, spoiled uh, Shutter Island. Oh, that movie, I'm not going to say bad, because a lot of people love it. That was one of those movies that, I love movies like it's that that, <laughs> that are confusing and um, a mystery. So I love trying to figure them out. And I guess that movie, like, five minutes in, and I was right. So I feel like it ruined it for me. Because I like yeah. doing that because I like thinking I'm right and I'm like, oh shit, I had thought I had this all figured out. I was dead wrong. So I was bummed I figured it out so early and I was right about it because then I kind of ruined it. Yeah, I was uh, in high school and those were fucking two huge movies when I was in high school and they got spoiled for me. I think Shutter Island definitely is ruined if you know that. I think Inception you'd still enjoy, especially because there's a lot of stuff that people argue with what is true and what isn't. So. I think a movie saw it on its own that I think you should still watch that one. Okay. Um, and then me and Danielle reactivated our A-list AMC memberships. <gasps> so we went and saw The Tenant, which uh, is his newest movie. And it's really good. I don't think a lot of people are saying it's his best movie yet. I think there's multiple I'd easily put ahead of it. But it is really good and uh, excuse, a good excuse to go back to the theater. And I feel like this is definitely a movie you want to see on the big screen if you're going to see it. And uh, keeps your attention a lot more in the action so crazy and the sound. He always has a crazy soundtrack or score oh, yeah. that fits the theater way better. So uh, it wasn't as good as I was hoping, but I also kind of thought that might be the case. Do you so. think it's still cheap as hell? Um, somewhat. Like this one wasn't, but it relatively was still cheap because uh, – it was IMAX and it was thirteen dollars, and that's usually like a twenty-one dollar ticket. But that was another reason why we activated. We only paid twenty dollars a month, and they gave us a ten dollar free for sign back up. And then I had two free five dollars from being on it before, and then I signed back up, and for some reason gave me three more five dollar ones. So I'm literally making money this week or this month <laughs> by having it. So I was gonna. Because I almost didn't do it because I don't know how much movies I'm going to see, especially if they don't start releasing new ones. I'll just wait to reactivate it. But a lot of those were going to go away at the end of October. So, well, I'm not about to pay $13 for this one movie. So I'd rather spend 7 extra dollars to have it for a month before I even knew I had all that extra money. So I end up making money off doing it anyways. But um, 
Yeah, most movies are cheap because a lot of them are re-releases, so almost all those are five dollars, and then the new ones are still usually cheaper. Especially if you go to a matinee, they're usually cheaper than the regular matinee. I just remembered you're not cutting your hair. Oh yeah, it's bothering me. I was gonna say, I was like, I'm, I think it's the longest I've ever seen your hair. Yeah, there's no way I can really control it anymore. I've been putting hats on a lot, or just kind of letting it go wild. Am I trying to slick it back or do something ridiculous? <laughs> but my hair is so poofy that it's probably going to be worse. Um, but then besides that, at the cabin, we uh, rented some movies to watch because we didn't know if they have Wi-Fi. Rented? Yeah. Went to Red, not Redbox, uh, Family Video. And, Kentucky? Uh, no, we got them here and then took them down. Ew. But we rented Logan because Danielle's never seen it. What? Not, yeah, she was against seeing it. She said, uh. She never liked X Men, and she like people said you gotta watch that, and I was like, no, you don't have to. And if you watch those and you don't really understand comics, that's probably gonna confuse you more. Cause you know, wait, this doesn't make sense. I feel like it's almost more helpful to not watch those because it doesn't really connect. Mm -hmm. And the movie's fucking amazing on its own, and also it's really bloody and over the top, and that's not really her kind of thing. But she really liked it, and uh, that movie still holds up and is so good. easily one of the best comic book movies I think, not just Marvel movies. I agree. And I think people discredit non-cinematic you know, uh, movies as being it. I think they do it with Batman, too. And like, they're all fucking comic book movies. Yeah, they're not part of the universe, so that's fair if you want to have my vote. Is, if you want to have that debate. But they're all comic book movies. I would put that up there with uh, Christopher Nolan's Batman's yeah. Joker, Deadpool. Yeah. That would be in that same category for me. Yeah, There's definitely. Some good ones. Um... Then we also watched Wonder Park, which I've talked to you about that, the Nickelodeon anime movie that came out last year. I think uh, maybe the best anime movie that year and definitely most underrated because it bombed at the box office and even some people we saw uh, don't see it. And that movie's fucking so good. It, I told you at the time, but the animation art style is good, but also the story is amazing. It seems kiddish, but gets really deep with stuff that you don't expect and Tells us a really good story. And I feel like you would love that movie. And yeah. I feel like you got way too much hate. Ever since I saw like the little promo cardboard thing, I wanted to watch it. Yeah. Yeah, you should do it. Let me know what you think. And then um, we watched A Quiet Place. I've seen it multiple times, but I love it. And I was trying to find a movie that was good for a cabin. And it was another perfect night. It was all rainy out. And we put that on. She's never seen it. And she was very against seeing it. What? Oh, yeah. yeah she didn't like scary movies. No. I forgot. And John Krasinski is one of her favorite actors. And like her Taylor Swift. And she still wasn't going to do it. But that actually ended up being her favorite ones of all the movies they brought. She was, said she was scared, but she said it was really good. It's a good movie. Yeah, I'm excited for the second one. Made me more excited. Um, then we also brought Doolittle. I never saw it, the not remake, reimagining, whatever you want to call it, with uh, Robert Downey Jr. That was like it, a death of Corona, man. That was right when the shit yeah. started. It was about what I expected. It's good, but uh, nothing special. And... It's weird. The one thing I didn't think would be an issue of the animation, I thought that was, you know, like the CG, I thought that'd be so easy to do in a movie like this. It seemed like it was really half-assed and the voice didn't line up with a lot of it. I was like, this seems kind of weird for this high budget of a movie and having Rob Downey Jr. in it. So it kind of pulled you out of it. But at the same time, I knew it was going to be kind of a silly movie, so yeah, it was enjoyable for what it is. Um, then... I finally caught up on The Walking Dead, which I'm not going to lie to you. I thought I did months ago, and I've been waiting for the season finale. And then I was like, so what episode to end on? I was like, oh, shit. I still have three episodes this whole time. <laughs> I've just been waiting. God, are they going to air this thing? And then I'm fucking sitting here, and I haven't even caught up for when they do air it. So I yeah, finally. I'm really confused. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, luckily I remember where I was, and I caught up at a good point, and I got all of it. And, um,. I'm really excited going into it. And then, ironically enough, this before any of the news came out, um, which is why I was still questioning when the release date was coming, like I said. But uh, then I was like, you know what? I'm going to give Fear of the Walking Dead a chance because I was really in the Walking Dead mood. And like I said, I liked what I saw. I just, I was so bummed that they didn't, it wasn't what I imagined, what I thought they should have done about the world falling apart, which they do that, but they run through it all in like the course of three episodes and then it's just, like the Walking Dead world, and I was like, man, this would be so much cooler to see how fast uh, or how the world, world fell apart. But um, that only has six episodes in the first season, I think 15 to 20 in the next five. So I actually already made it through season one. 
and I like it. And um, planning on starting season two and seeing where it goes. Because like I said, uh, even though they are going crazy with it, if there's still quality, that's all I really care about. And yeah. the like I said, I love The Walking Dead. And I love zombies in general, and that's why intrigued me. The Walking Dead is something that was supposed to be never ending. So if it's quality, I'm there for it, you know. Um, and then the only other thing I watched was the NFL tonight finally returned, and um, it's a little depressing to watch aside from all the nonsense because Von Miller is out for the year, and yeah, well, it's not confirmed yet, but I think it's all but confirmed. Really? Yeah, and I can see him if they make the playoffs, maybe coming back because it's not confirmed that he's out for the year, so I can see something like that happening. But also, it's going to be a lot harder to make the playoffs with your best player out. And then I don't know if you saw the news today. Um, Cortland Sutton, their best receiver, and a lot of people, not even Bronco fans, think he can be the best receiver in the league because he's progressed so much. Um, he got hurt in practice today. And um, they said it was a, he had to have an MRI done. So, that, oh, shit, this sounds like another season-ending thing. But he said it was a shoulder sprain. So, I'm hoping that would just be like a like a game-by-game game thing. But that's still... Not a good sign to your top player overall and your top receiver and potentially top offensive player are going to be out. Defensive and top offensive. Uh huh. Yeah. Damn. I was so excited going into the season. Like I said, I've had a lot of hope. I, there's question marks for sure, but they had the upside was very high with the Broncos. So, are you used to really think Baltimore is going to gonna beat the Browns? Oh, uh, yeah. I, I think that should be worthy the other way around. Like, so you. Really think they have a chance? The <laughs> Browns have a chance to upset them, but yes, I really think so. Yeah, I, I am uh, holding out hope to the point where, in fantasy, I made sure anybody I had in the Ravens, I was starting just by default them playing the Browns. <laughs> uh, get them in there. That is points for sure. Um, but all the nonsense is annoying and distracting. And I know it's gonna. It's not like this was the opener, and then. It's going to be back to normal football. It's going to be the same for every single game because they're going to assume that people didn't see this game, so they're going to do the same the stuff for every game. Do you think so? Oh, yeah, definitely. I hope I'm wrong, but, yeah, I don't see any way they don't. Maybe not the two national anthems and that, but definitely the point of, like, all the talk about who's kneeling, who's doing what, who's doing that. 50% of commentary not being about the game. Yeah, I think for sure, sadly. That's why I said I feel like South Park just fucking nailed it. Um, but that's it for me. So I guess we get on to the free games. Yes, sir. So on Xbox One, you have the division till September 30th, and then starting on the 16th till October 15th, you have the Book of Unwritten Rules Two, which I didn't know the first one of that. I didn't either. <laughs> On 360, you have Override Mech City Brawl till September 15th, and De Blob till September or De Blob 2 till September 15th, and then starting on September 16th till the 30th, you have Armed and Dangerous, and then PlayStation Plus, you have Street Fighter 5 and PUBG till October 5th. You got any fake outrage this week, buddy? Is it's been a while? No, me either. No. I'm going to kind of jam-pack this episode, so it's not too bad that we missed that this time, I guess. Um, so, I think that's finally it. Is it after, like, our five-hour episode? I think so, man. <laughs> My ass is on fire. <laughs> I moved to the couch. Um, but, uh, we'll I'll be uh, doing another in-person episode next week, and we're finally going to do our hidden gem slash underrated um games that we've been talking about for probably like a month and a half now so we're finally get to that and um oh shit we didn't even cover ubisoft do we want to do that we can save it to the next episode okay Does that work for you i feel yeah. like it's not too crazy yeah no there Nothing isn't crazy happen no we can do that so thanks for tuning in as always you can send any corrections questions or feedback to current backloaders at gmail.com and you can follow us on twitter instagram and facebook at current backlog and thank you for everybody that watches this show. It was five hours.